Okay, all praise to the Most High. Shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ bless you. Um, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath to you all. All praise to the Most High God. Brothers and sisters online, okay, all praise to the Most High. Take notes, take notes. Okay, today's topic um, is called the anatomy of sin. The anatomy of sin. We're going to be examining sin on this day, okay? What happens when we are in the midst of it and what to do to recover from ourselves from it, okay? So, take notes, pay close attention. All right. Um, let's open up with John 8. John 8, 32. You know how we do. John chapter 8, verse 32. Pay close attention, brothers and sisters, men and brethren. Okay. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. Read again. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. So understand, what we're offering you is nothing but the truth. We're offering you the truth and nothing else. Understand that, okay? Either you want to hear the truth or lies. But on this day, as all days, we're offering you the truth and nothing else. Okay? Give me Psalms 119 verse 142. Let's get the truth. Psalms 119 verse 142. Let's understand what the truth is. The truth shall make you free. Psalms 119, verse 142. Read that. Okay, come on. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Why it says everlasting? Righteousness is the laws of God. It's everlasting. It's forever. Okay, come on. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth? And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. So go back. Now read Psalms 119 verse 151. Verse 151. Read that for me. The book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 151. Come on. Thou art near, O Lord. Uh -huh. And all thy commandments are truth. And all thy commandments are truth. All thy commandments are truth. So if you ever wanted to know what the truth is, the truth is the laws of God. So go back to John 8, verse 32. John 8, verse 32 again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And you shall know the truth. And you shall know the law. You shall know the law and the commandments. That's what he's saying. You shall know the law and the commandments. Go ahead. And the truth shall make you free. And the law and the commandments shall make you free. That's what Christ is saying. Christ is telling us that the only way for us to be free is that we must know the law and we must know the commandments. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6. Wisdom of Solomon 6. Because King Solomon said the same thing. Hmm. He keeps saying the same thing, doesn't he? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and verse... No, it's not 6 I want. Yeah. Mm. It's not in my notes. So hold on a sec. Yeah, Wisdom of Solomon 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 18. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 18. Come on. For so the ways of death which lived on the earth were, were reformed. Were reformed. So the, the ways of them that would lived on the earth. Who's living on the earth? We are. We are on the earth right now. You understand? So our ways must be reformed. Meaning what? We must be born again. Give me that in um, Lamentations 2 and 1. When it says the ways of them that lived on the earth, what does that mean? The ways of them that lived on the earth, it says their ways were reformed. Okay, Lamentations 2 and 1. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. How has the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in, a, in, a, in his anger? In his anger. The daughter of Zion is the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And cast down from heaven. And did what now? And cast down from heaven. And cast down from heaven, read. Unto the earth. Unto the what? Unto the earth. Unto the what? Unto the earth. Unto the earth. Come on. The beauty of Israel. The what now? The beauty of Israel. So he cast unto the earth the beauty of Israel. Go ahead. And remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. In the what now? In the day of his anger. Because the Lord was angry with us. That's why we ended up in captivity. Now, go back. Wisdom of Solomon 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. When he says, he cast the beauty of Israel 
from heaven into the earth. What does that mean exactly? Hold that. Give me the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus. Okay. Give me Sirach. Give me Sirach 10. Sirach 10 verse 6. Sirach 10, not verse 6 actually. Give me verse 8. Yeah, that's what I want. Sirach 10 verse 8. When he says he cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel. Read it. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 8. Go ahead. Because of unrighteous dealing. Because of unrighteous dealing. When he says unrighteous dealing because of sin. When he says unrighteous dealing means sin. First John 5, we're coming back. First John chapter 5. Read verse 17 for me. First John 5, verse 17. Because of unrighteous dealing. Let's understand what that means. Brother John, are we still good here? Because I keep kicking the camera. Make sure it's good. Okay, read it. First book of John, chapter 5, verse 17. Read. All unrighteousness. All what? All unrighteousness. All unrighteousness, come on. Is sin. Is what? Is sin. Is sin. Read. And there is a sin not unto death. Okay, let's go back. Go back to Sirach 10 now, verse 8 again. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 8. Read. Because of unrighteous deeds. Because of sin. Because of sin. Sinful dealing. Go ahead. Injuries. Injuries, meaning sin. Go ahead. And riches got and by deceit. Injuries and riches got by deceit. Who is he talking about? The 12 tribes of Israel. Read. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. You see that thing? The kingdom was translated from one people to another. So when the kingdom was translated from us to the other nations now, like the white man being ruling over us right now, what happened? Go back to Lamentations 2 and 1 so we understand. Lamentations 2 and 1. One more again. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. How has the Lord covered the church of Zion with a cloud in his anger? You see that? How did the Lord cover the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? Read. And cast down from heaven. He cast down from what now? And cast down from heaven. When he says cast down from heaven, he's talking about what? He translated, the kingdom was translated from one people to another. That's what it means. He says he cast down from heaven. It doesn't mean that, does it mean the children of Israel were up there in the sky? No, we were in our kingdom. We were ruling the nations on earth for 40 years. You understand? Eight years actually. Eight years from the time of King David and King Solomon. The kingdom was translated from one people to another. We went from heaven into the earth. The earth we went into captivity. Read. How was the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? With a cloud in his anger. Read. And cast down from heaven. And cast down from heaven. Come on. Unto the earth. Unto the earth. Read. The beauty of Israel. Read. And remember not his footstool mm. in the day of his anger. Now go back. Wisdom of Solomon 9. Now verse 7, verse 18. One more again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Read. A man of an ill tongue. No, 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 no. Oh, Wisdom of Solomon 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Sir. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Come on. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth mm. were reformed. You see that? The ways of them which lived on the earth. Who's the them that live on the earth? Us. We are in captivity right now. We are not in our kingdom. We are not in heaven. Read. And men were taught the things that are, that are pleasing unto thee. So you see that when it says, For the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. So right now, the Most High God is reforming our ways. You understand? He is commanding us to be born again and change our, our ways, our evil ways. Read again verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Come on. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth uh -huh. were reformed. Were reformed, meaning were changed. Through what? Repentance. Read. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee. You see that? It says men are taught the things that are pleasing unto the Lord. Read. And were saved through wisdom. And they were what now? And were saved through wisdom. You see how we're going to get delivered? Through wisdom. Wisdom is how we're going to get saved. That's why Christ said what? Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He's saying the same thing here. It's the same thing that John is saying in John 8, Christ is saying in John 8, 32. When he says what? And we're saved through wisdom. But let's get, let's get into the part where he says, 
the things that were pleasing unto him. Get that in um, Sarak 2. Sarak 2. Read verse 16. Sarak 2 verse 16. Chapter 2 verse 16. Come on. They that fear the Lord. They that fear the Lord. Will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. They will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. What is well pleasing unto the Lord? When you fear him. When you fear the Lord, that is that that that's a thing that is worth pleasing unto him. But hold that. Give me Isaiah 42, 21. We're coming back. Isaiah 42, verse 21. Watch how this comes together. So keep in mind the first, the second, the second precept we went to. Was Psalms 119 verse 142. So keep that in mind. Now read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 42 verse 21. Read. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. You see that? The, world, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Go ahead. He will magnify the law. He will do what now? He will magnify the law. He will magnify the law. So Isaiah is prophesying about Christ. He's prophesying when Christ walked the earth. What did Christ do? He magnified the law and made it honorable. Go ahead. The law is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Read. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So he says he will, meaning future prophecy. When, when, meaning when Christ walked the earth, he will, when he walks the earth, he's going to magnify the law and make it honorable. So Isaiah is prophesying. Remember Isaiah was walking during the time of the Assyrian Empire. So he's prophesying about the coming of the Lord and when he walks the earth, he will be magnifying the laws of God and he will make the laws of God honorable in the eyes of all Israel. That's what he's saying. So go back now. Sarak 2 verse 16. Sarak chapter 2. Read verse 16. One, one more again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 16. Come on. They that fear the Lord. They that fear the Lord. So the key is fear of the Lord. Read. They that fear the Lord will seek wit, will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. So what is well pleasing unto him? Righteous, his righteousness, his commandments, his laws. Read. And they that love him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. Shall be filled with the law. So the things that are well pleasing unto the Lord is his commandments. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 18. One more again. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 18. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Come on. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. Read. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee. So what are the things that are pleasing unto the Lord? His commandments. So you are going to be taught the things that are well pleasing unto the most High God of heaven and earth. Those things that are well pleasing are his commandments, his laws. Read. And we're saved. And we're what? And we're saved. Come on. Through wisdom. When you are saved, it means you are free. You see that? When you are saved, it means you are free. Go back to John 8, 32. So Christ is saying the same thing. John 8, 32. One more again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. Ye shall know the law and the commandments. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. And they were saved through wisdom. The same thing. He's saying the same thing. The only thing that's going to deliver us is wisdom of the Most High God of heaven and earth. Not politicking. Not politicking. No. The wisdom of the Most High God is going to have us delivered. We're going to rule the earth. You understand? We're going to rule over these devils. Understand that, man? Okay. Now, watch this. Um, let's get into the topic now. You understand? Let's get into the topic. That wasn't the topic. Okay? That was the class before the class. Okay. So, the anatomy of sin. The anatomy of sin. Okay? So, you're going to write these things down. These are the characteristics that we're going to be going over. Okay? You understand? Now, give me the book of Zacharias, actually. Give me Zacharias 3. Zacharias 3. Baby steps. I'm still going. I'm getting into the class. Okay? Zacharias 3 verse 1. 
Because brothers and sisters are fasting this day, afflicting their souls. We're fasting, we're all fasting as a congregation. So all praises to the Most High, so we can get our minds right, so we can overcome our ills, our mental hang-ups, because we're sick. We say, if you think you're good, you are in the wrong place. You understand? If you think everything is perfect with you, you are in the wrong place. Let me say it again. If everything is all good, you are in the wrong place. Yeah. We are here because we sick. You understand? Give me, give me Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1 and 5. If you, if when you believe in your heart that everything is good, you are in the wrong place. Yeah. You understand? Not my Jesus. You know how they be doing. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 1 and 5. Watch this. Chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. Actually, start of verse 4. Watch this. Chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. Ah, sinful nation. Ah, sinful nation. Go ahead. A people laden with iniquity. No, no, we good. A people laden with iniquity. You see that? We are a people laden with iniquity. We are covered with sin. Read. A seed of evil doers. The Lord says we are all the twelve tribes of Israel. God says we are a seed of evil doers. Because I know right now there's a Negro right here in up in here who said, No, I'm good. Everything is perfect with me. There's a sister right now who don't believe it. He says, No, me, I'm good. That scripture don't apply to me. You understand? Read on. Children that are corrupted. Children that are corruptors. Go ahead. They have forsaken the Lord. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They provoke the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Come on. They have gone away backward. They have gone away backward. Come on. Verse 5. Go ahead. Why should he be stricken anymore? Why should you be stricken anymore? The Lord is asking. Go ahead. He will revolt more and more. You will do evil more and more. You will, see, you will add sin unto sin, he's saying. Read. The whole head. Is sick. The what now? The whole head is sick. Because remember, Judah is the head tribe. The whole head is sick. God, the Lord is saying, come on. And the whole heart faint. The whole heart is faint. The head is Judah. The whole heart does Ephraim. Okay, go ahead. From the sole of the foot. From the sole of the foot. Even unto the head. Even unto the head. Go ahead. There is no soundness in it. There is no soundness in it. Come on. But wounds. But wounds. Wounds goes into sin. Read. Right? And bruises. And bruises. And purit purifying sores. And purifying sores. Come on. They have not been closed. They have not been closed, meaning they have not been healed. Okay, come on. Neither bound up. Neither mollified with ointment. They are not mollified with ointment. The ointment is this Bible. The ointment is this is the holy Bible. So if you believe you good, guess what? You are in the wrong place. Because all of us who are here because we've acknowledged that we, are, we have sinned against the Lord. We've provoked him to anger. We've done evil before the Lord continually. That's why today we're doing what? We're afflicting our souls that the Lord may have mercy upon us. That's why we're doing this thing. You understand? But if you think you're good, not, nothing wrong, everything is perfect, you are in the wrong place. Go back to the Christian church. You understand? Now watch this. Um, Zechariah 3 and 1. Zacharias chapter 3 verse 1. The book of Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. He showed me Joshua the high priest. He showed me Joshua the high priest. Come on. Standing before the angel of the Lord. Read. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist. You see what Satan does? The job of Satan is to resist you. Is to resist you. Is to fight you from keeping God's commandments. Satan don't want you to keep God's laws. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan. The Lord said unto Satan. Go ahead. The Lord rebuked thee. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Go ahead. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Read. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. The Lord has chosen Jerusalem, man. The Lord didn't, cho didn't choose, uh, you know, um, the, the mountain that, you know, but what's this name? What's this guy's name? Um, Shembe. The, the mountain he jumped from. No, he didn't choose that mountain. He chose Mount Zion, man. He chose Mount Zion. Understand that. Read. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 2. Go ahead. The Lord said unto Satan. Read. The Lord rebuked thee. The Lord Satan. rebuked thee, O Satan. Go ahead. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. The Lord had chosen Jerusalem. He didn't chose Moab. He didn't chose Ammon. He didn't chose Edom or Ishmael or Hamites. Mm -mm. He chose the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. 
Ray. Is not this a, a bread plucked out of the fire? Is this not a bread plucked out of the fire? Because who's this smoking fire bread? Satan. Satan is a smoking fire bread. Let's get the precept. Get that in uh, Isaiah chapter 11 real quick. Okay, this goes into, um, you know, during the time of Pekah, Uzziah and all that. Um, no, Isaiah 7, not 11. Yeah, I think that's what I want. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 7, start of verse 1. This is during the time of Ahaz. Okay, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz. In the days of Ahaz. Ahaz was a king. Go ahead. The son of Jotham. Read. The son of Uzziah. Mm. King of Judah. Go ahead. That Rezin, the king of Syria. So Rezin was a Syrian king. He conspired with Pekah, the king of the, king of the northern kingdom. You understand? They conspired against Judah. Read. And Pekah, the son of Ramalai. Read. King of Israel uh -huh. went up to Jerusalem to war against it. You see that? So what did Pekah do? Pekah conspired with the heathen to war against us, the tribe of Judah. Read. But could not prevail against it. Because they could not prevail against it. Why? Because of our, for our forefather, King David. You understand? Read. And it was told the house of David. It was say, told the house of David. Read on. Syria is confederate with Ephraim. You see that Syria was confederate with Ephraim. Go ahead. And his heart was moved. And his heart was moved. Meaning what? Ahaz became scared when he says his heart was moved. Read. And the heart of his people. And guess what? When the leader is afraid, everybody else is going to be afraid. Read. As the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Read on. That said the Lord unto Isaiah. Watch this. Go forth now to meet Ahaz. Mm -hmm. Thou and Sherejashu. Thou and Sherejashu. Read. Thy son. Meaning Isaiah's son. Go ahead. At the end of the conduit. At the end of the conduit of the. At the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the in the highway of the fuller's field. Yes, sir. You are reading. The book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 3. Go ahead. That said the Lord unto Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Go forth now to meet Ahaz. Thou and Shea Jeshub, thy son, Ray. at the end of the conduit of the upper pool of the highway of the fellas field, Ray. and say unto him, Take heed and be quiet. Meaning, take heed and shut the hell up. Be quiet. Okay, go ahead. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Read. Neither be faint hearted. Don't be, af don't be in faint hearted. Go ahead. For the two tails of this smoking fire brand. You see that? For the two tails of this smoking fire brand meaning troublemakers. I'm giving an example of what it means when it says a brand that is plucked out of the fire. You understand? That smoking fire brand, a troublemaker. Okay, go ahead. For the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria mm -hmm. and of the son of Ramalai. Pekka. So now, go back now. Go back to Zacharias, man. Zacharias 3 again. Yes, sir. Nah. Zacharias 3, read verse 2 again. The book of Zacharias, chapter 3, verse 2. Watch this. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. The Lord rebuked thee. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Read. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Come on. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. Come on. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Meaning the two brands of this, the two what? The two brands of this smoking one. Go back to Isaiah. Let's not butcher this. The two tails of the smoking fire brands. Oh, that's it right there. Go back. Zechariah again. Chapter 3, verse 2 again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 2. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, uh -huh. The Lord rebuked thee. The Lord rebuked thee. Come on. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Read. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem mm -hmm. rebuked thee. Read. Is not this a bread plucked out of the fire? You see that thing? Because Satan is a troublemaker. That's why he resists you when you want to keep God's commandments. Read. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Remember, who's Joshua? Joshua is the high priest. Jump up to verse 1 again. 
The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 1. Read. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest. The what now? The high priest. Hold that. Give me Exodus 19, verse 6. Because the Lord prophesied through Moses that the 12 tribes of Israel will become kings and priests. Okay? Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 6. Read. And he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. He shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Read. And holy nation. And holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. No, no, unto the Levites. Unto the children of Israel. All twelve tribes of Israel. You understand that? So go back. Zacharias now. 3 verse 3. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Who does Joshua represent? The 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And stood before the angel. Mm -hmm. So Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. So Joshua represents the 12 tribes of Israel clothed in filthy garments. You understand that? These filthy garments represent what? Sin, wounds, and bruises, and putrefying sores. Like we read in the book of Isaiah. You understand? Give me that in Leviticus 5, verse 2 and 3. I'm going to read this later on, but let me just read it now. Leviticus 5, verse 2. The book of Leviticus, chapter 5, verse 2. Come on. Oh, if a soul touch any unclean thing. If a soul touch any unclean thing. Because when you touch an unclean thing, guess what? You become unclean. You become defiled. So when say Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, because what? We as the 12 tribes of Israel, we've been defiled by sin. Go ahead. Oh, if a soul touch any unclean thing, uh -huh. whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast, Read. or a carcass of an unclean cat, come on, or a carcass of an unclean creeping thing, Read. or if it be hidden from him. Meaning when he says hidden from him, meaning you don't know, you're not aware of it, that it defiles you. Read. He also shall be unclean and guilty. You shall be unclean and you shall be guilty. Even though it didn't come to mind. Even though you did it out of ignorance, you didn't know. You are still unclean and you are guilty. Right? Oh, if he touch the uncleanness of man. The uncleanness of man, go ahead. Whatsoever uncleanness it be that a man shall be defiled without. Right, shall be what now? Shall be defiled without. You see what happens when, you are, when, when we are clothed with filthy garments, we are unclean. We've been defiled. Read. And it be hid from him. And it be hid from you. Go ahead. When he know of it. When you know of it, meaning now the knowledge of that that thing is wrong comes to your mind, comes to your understanding. Read. Then he shall be guilty. Then he shall be guilty. You see that thing? So the Lord is letting you know why Joshua had filthy garments on. Okay. And this is the book of Leviticus. He wasn't just talking about the Levites. He was talking about the 12 tribes of Israel that we read in Exodus 19 verse 6. So Joshua represents the 12 tribes of Israel in the midst of sin. When he had filthy garments on. You understand? Okay. Um, go back. Zacharias. Because when he says, and be defiled therewith. Um, let me read this. Give me the book of um, 1 Corinthians. No, no, 2 Corinthians 7. Let's get some more sense on this so you're not confused. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Read. Having therefore these promises. The promises is that we are going to, the Lord is going to deliver us from sin. That's what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 18. That they shall be saved through wisdom. Read. Dearly beloved, uh -huh. let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. You see that? Dearly beloved, let us what now? Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and uh -huh. spirit. You see that? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the spirit and of the, of the flesh and of the spirit. Read. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You see that? So the, being defiled... Having filthy garments is because of what? Sin. So the filthy garments represent sin. You understand? Give me Mark 7, 21. Mark 7, verse 21. The things that defile us. You understand? The things that defile men and women in this truth. Sin. Mark 7, 21. 
Chapter of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. For from within, out of the heart of men. From, from within. Get read verse 18, actually. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 18. Go ahead. And he says unto them, mm. Are you so without understanding also? Are you so? Are you also without understanding? So how do you get understanding? You keep God's commandments. That's how you get a good understanding. Read. Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without enters into the man, it cannot defile him? Watch this. Read. Because it, it entereth not into his heart. It entereth not into his heart. Because what enters into your mind, that's what defiles you. In your mind. What's in your mind is what defiles you. Read. Back into the bed. Uh -huh. And goeth out into the throat. Read. Paging all meats. Paging all meats. Go ahead. Watch this. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, mm -hmm. that defileth the man. He says, that which cometh out of the man, that defiles the man. So what comes out of the man? Where is it at? In the mind. In the mind. So the mind is your heart. Your heart is your mind. Your mind is a spirit. And that spirit can be defiled. Go ahead. Watch this. The Lord is going to tell you what's in the mind. And the things that comes out of that mind is what defiles you. Go ahead. For from within, out of the heart of men. Now Christ is giving the sense. He's telling you what this means. Right? Proceed evil thoughts. You see that thing? Because the heart is the thing that is in the middle of your chest. It pumps blood through the rest of your body. So that thing don't think. You understand? It's just an organ that does not have a mind. You understand that? He cannot think. So he's not talking about that. Read again, verse 21. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Read. For from within. For from within. Because. Be, the word for means because. Because from within. Meaning within. Go ahead. Out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men. Come on. Proceed evil thoughts. 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 That's the key. Thoughts. Okay, go ahead. Adulteries. Adulteries. Go ahead. Fornications. Fornications. Murders. Murderers. Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness. Uh -huh. Wickedness. Read. Deceit. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. Mm. Blasphemy. Pride. Foolishness. Go ahead. All these. All these evil things. All these what now? All these evil things. All these evil things. Come on. Come from within. They come what now? Come from within. When he says from within, what is the within making reference to? The heart, the mind. Go ahead. All these evil things come from within mm -hmm. and defile the man. And they defile the man. So you see what defiles us? Yes, what causes us to have filthy garments? Sin. The evil that sits in the mind, that's what defiles us. That's what causes us to have filthy garments. You understand? That's what the Lord was. That's what Christ was explaining to us. Okay? So, go back to Zacharias now. Zacharias 3. Read verse 3 again. The book of Zacharias, chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Go ahead. And stood before the angel. And he stood before the angel. Come on. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, mm -hmm. saying, Take away the, the filthy garments from him. He says, Take away the filthy garments from him. These filthy garments is going to tell you what that is. Go ahead. And unto him he said, mm -hmm. Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. That's the filthy garments. Iniquity. So the filthy garments are making reference to sin. Iniquity. Okay, go ahead. And I will close thee. With change of raiment. And I will do what now? And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. I'm going to clothe you with a change of garments. I'm going to give you new garments. Read. And I said, let them set a, a fair mitri upon his head. Read. So they set a fair mitri upon his head and clothed him with garments. They did what now? And clothed him with garments. They clothed him with a change of garments now. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord stood by. So, guess what? So, these filthy garments is making reference to iniquity, sin. You understand? Read that verse 4 again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 4. Read. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Read. Take away the filthy garments from him. Take away the filthy garments from him. Come on. And unto him he said, Read. Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. Read. And I will close thee with change of raiment. And I'm going to clothe thee with a change of raiment. 
You understand? So, I'm going to deal with this later on. You understand? So now, write this down. We're going to be going over the anatomy of sin. Okay? So the first thing, the first one is what? Pride. You see that? Pride. That's the first one right there. Pride is the first one. Pride. So, so before we get there, actually, um, so the reason why we have filthy garments on, so that's why we are afflicting our soul. Give me Mark chapter 17 verse 20. No, 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 Mark 2, excuse me, Mark 2 verse 18. Mark 2 verse 18. Mark chapter 2 verse 18. Yeah. The book of Mark chapter 2 verse 18. Go ahead. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. They what now? Used to fast. They, they, they were accustomed to fasting. Read on. And they come and say unto him, mm. Why don't the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? Watch this. But thy disciples fast not. But he says, Christ, your deeper, why are your disciples not fasting? Go ahead. Watch this. And, it, and Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. Can the children of the bright, can the children of the bright cham chamber fast? Can the children of the bright chamber fast? The children of the bride chamber, because remember, Christ is the is the groom. We are the bride. You understand? So when he says, "Can the children of the bride chamber fast?" Go ahead. Can the children of the bride chamber fast? Uh huh. While the bridegroom is with them. While the bride, because Christ was right there. Whatever we needed, we asked him. You understand? We didn't need to fast. He was right there with us. You got a problem? You see, Judas was the only one that didn't say, "Lord, help me with the thieving spirit." The Lord was right there with him. He said, to hell with that. You understand? When he was given the opportunity to take care of the money, he could have said, listen, me, I have a thieving spirit. So I, please, take away the thieving spirit first, then I'll, hold, I'll take care of the bag. How about that? Christ was right there. Judas was like, nah. I'm not going to ask for cancer. I'm not going to ask to be corrected. I'm not going to ask the Lord to humble myself down for the Lord to take away this demon from me. He said, could you imagine that? The son of God is right there in front of you. You said, to hell with that. You understand that? Go ahead. The book of Mark chapter 2 verse 19. Read. And Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. can the children of the bride chamber fast? Read. While the bridegroom is with them, go ahead. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, uh -huh. they cannot fast. As long as Christ was right there with us, why there was no need for us to do that. You understand that? Go ahead. But the days will come. But the days will come. The future now. He's prophesying. But the days will come. Go ahead. When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. Hold that Acts 1 and 9. When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, then shall they fast in those days. Mm. That's what we're doing right now, brothers and sisters. Okay? Read that in Acts 1 and 9. When the bridegroom was taken away from them. Acts 1 and 9. Read it. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Read. And when he had spoken these things, uh -huh. while they beheld, while they looked, he was taken up. He was what now? He was taken up. He says, but, while, but when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. What did he say then? And when he had spoken these things, Read. while they beheld. While they beheld, go ahead. He was taken up. He was what now? He was taken up. He was taken up. Be me up, Scotty. He was taken up in a chariot. Read. And a cloud. Received him out of their sight, and a cloud received him out of their sight, meaning they saw him. They saw a man fly before them. Mm. They saw Christ be flying, man. He was taken up. You understand? So go back. Mark 8, Mark 2, Mark 2, verse 19. No, 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 verse 20. Mark 2, verse 20. Read that again. Mark 2, verse 20. The book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 20. Come on. But the days will come. But the days will come. When the bride... Whoa, whoa, whoa. But the days will come. What are those days? The last days. These days that we're in now. That's the days that Christ is talking about. The days we're living in right now. Read. But the days will come. Come on. When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. So how was he taken away? He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Read. And then shall they fast in those days. And then shall they fast in those last days. 
That's what we're doing right now. We're fasting. Because the bridegroom is not with us like this. Like how he was back then with us. You understand? So that's why we are fasting in these days. Okay? So all praises to the Most High God for that thing. Now, that's why, because we have filthy garments on. If you think when your garment is good, you don't need to do this. You, you understand that? You don't got to do it. You just sit there in some corner somewhere. You understand? Now, let's get into it. The anatomy of sin. I've been saying it. Let's get into it. So, the first, the first sign of sin is pride. That's the first sign. Pride. Write it down. Pride. We're going to deal with that. Now, now, give me the book of Sirach 32. Sirach 32. Um, read verse uh, 18. Sirach 32 verse 18. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32 verse 18. Yes, yeah, huh? read that. And the reason why pride takes place is because men and women worship themselves. The reason why the pride is taking place, the spirit of pride is taken over, is because men and women worship themselves. Not the God of heaven and earth. No, they worship themselves and their feelings. Yes, how they feel in their heart. You understand? Now read that. Sirach 32 verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32 verse 18. Come on. A man of counsel. A what now? A man of counsel. A man of counsel. A man or woman of counsel. Read. Will be considered. Will be what now? Will be considered. Will be considered. Come on. But a strange and proud man mm -hmm. is not daunted with fear. They are not daunted with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not with them. Read. Even when of himself he hath done without counsel. Now, let's read it again. Let's break this down. Come on. Verse 18. 18. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 18. Ray. A man of counsel will be considered. A man of counsel will be considered. Let's get some examples. What that mean? A man of counsel will be considered. What will they be considered of? What will they consider? Give me the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 65. 1 Maccabees 2, 65. Let's get some examples here. Okay. He says, a man of counsel will be considered. Okay. Read that. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 65. Watch this. And behold, mm -hmm. I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. You see that thing right there? I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Read. Give ear unto him always. Uh -huh. He shall be a father unto you. Some of you don't believe that I've been here. You don't believe it. That's why you break the fifth commandment. That's the fifth commandment, right? Uh -huh. Exodus 20, verse 12. Yeah. Read it. That's why a lot of you, you don't believe it. That you don't believe that thing. You don't believe that we fathers unto you in the spirit. You don't believe it. You understand? Read it. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Go ahead. That thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So let's go back. First Maccabees 2, verse 65, once again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 65. Come on. And behold. I know that your brother, Simon, is a man of counsel. Uh -huh. Give ear unto him always. Meaning, listen to him. Read on. He shall be a father unto you. He shall be a father unto you. Now watch this. Let's get an example. Give me that in 1 Maccabees 13, verse 15. 1 Maccabees 13, verse 15. When our forefather Simon, an example, that he was a man of counsel, and he was considerate of the things that were taking place during his days, the decisions he has to make. He considers certain things, the consequences of the decisions, and how the people are going to look at him when he makes those decisions. Watch this. Read it. First Five Maccabees 13, verse 15. Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 15. This is when our forefather Jonathan was kidnapped by Trifon. Okay, you can read the history on your own. Read. Whereas we have Jonathan, thy brother, in hold. You see that? We have Jonathan, your brother, in hold. Meaning what? We have him as a, as a what? Um... Captive, right? We have him captive as a hostage. That's it right there. That's the word. Hostage. Read. It is for money that he is owing unto the king's charger. Read. Concerning the business that was committed unto him. So they are lying on this wise. Go ahead. Wherefore now, send a hundred talents of silver. Read. And two of his sons for hostages. You see that? It says send a hundred talents of silver and two of Jonathan's sons as hostages too. Go ahead. That when he is at liberty, when he's free, Ray, he may not revolt from us 
and he will let him and we will let him go. Mm. Here upon Simon, I'll here upon, okay. Here upon Simon, albeit he perceived that they spake deceitfully unto him. So he knew that they were speaking deceitfully unto him. They were deep, they were being deceptive. You understand that? So our forefather Simon understood the reasonings of men. He understood the psychology of men and women. Was this? Go ahead. Yet sent he the money and the children. So he sent the money and the children anyway. Go ahead. Let's pay adventure. You see that now? This is him being considerate. Read. Let's pay adventure. Uh -huh. He should procure to himself a great hatred of the people. You because the people were gonna hate him. What were the people gonna say? Keep reading. Read. Who might have said? Mm -hmm. Because I sent him not. I sent not the money and the children. You see that because I sent him not the money and the children. Because he didn't send the money and the children. Go ahead. Therefore is Jonathan dead. You see that the people, the 12 tribes of Israel, the congregation was going to blame him for it. To say the reason why our Jonathan is dead is because when Typhon said, send the money and the children, you didn't. But Simon knew that if he doesn't send the money and the children, guess what? He knew that whether he sent them or not, they were going to kill Jonathan regardless. So he knew that. So our forefather Simon was a man of counsel and he was considerate of these things. So he made that decision knowing very well that they are not going to let Jonathan go. They were going to murder our forefather Jonathan. But he sent the money and the children anyway. Lest the people say, because of you, Jonathan is dead. You see that thing? So that's why he was called, Simon was a man of counsel. And this is an example of him being considerate of the decisions that he had to make and how the people were going to perceive him. You understand that? Okay, go back. Sarah 32, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 18. Watch this. A man of counsel. A man of counsel, like our forefather Simon was. Right? Will be considered. And he was considered. You understand? So he had to make a difficult decision, but he understood the psychology, the psyche of men, because he was a man of counsel. Go ahead. But a strange and proud man. But a strange and a proud man. Go ahead. Is not daunted with fear. Is not daunted with fear. Let's deal with that. Give me the book of Exodus 30 verse 9. Let's deal with the strange part. He says, but a, a strange and a proud man is not daunted with fear. Remember now, the first characteristics of what? The anatomy of sin is pride. What brings about pride? When you don't seek counsel. When you don't take counsel. When you take counsel for granted, pride has entered in. You understand? Pride has entered in the building now. Your spiritual house. Now read that. Exodus 8 verse 9. Pay close attention. Okay, come on. The book of Exodus chapter 30 verse 9. Read. Ye shall offer no strange incense you, there. You shall what now? Ye shall offer no strange incense there on. Now this is talking about the when it, when it comes to the, the sacrificing and offerings. The burnt offerings, the sin offerings. You understand? The meat offerings and so forth. Regarding Aaron and his sons when they do the priest's office. The offices of the priesthood, there was commands. There was a law for everything. There was a law for meat offerings. There was a law for peace offerings. There was a law for burnt offerings, so on and so forth. There was a law attached to each offering. So now, when it comes to the incense, you understand? It says, don't be offering strange fire thereon. You understand? Read again, verse 9. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 9. Read. Ye shall offer no strange incense mm -hmm. thereon. You see, no strange incense. Don't be bringing incense, uh, like for instance, you know, bringing, what is this? Mbe, but don't be bringing them stuff in. You understand? Don't be bringing mbe up in there. Or not in there. Don't bring, because, you know, brothers be offering, go eat. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know, they be smoking, they are offering. That's a strange incense up, up in there. You understand? Yeah. They offer strange incense. That's it. Weed. Because now Louis is being legalized, right? Yes, now, nah, they are offering to their strange gods. Go ahead. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 9. Ray. He shall offer no strange incense thereon. Mm -hmm, on the altar of incense. Go ahead. No burnt sacrifice. Uh -huh. No meat offering. Neither shall he pour drink offering thereon. Now, let's get to Let's get it. Because remember, we don't do that today. We're not doing those offerings like we did back then. But now we're offering spiritual sacrifices now. Those are the offerings we've offered this day. 
Uh, get that in Sarak 35 and 1. Sarak 35 and verse 1. And we read it earlier in the prayer. If any of you remember, you understand? Let's get that first in Psalm 51. In the prayer, Psalm 51, um, read verse 17. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 17. Read. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. You see that thing? The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Read. A broken and contrite heart, O God. Thou will not despise. The Lord will not despise that. Read on. Do good and thy good pleasure unto Zion. Read. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. Then shall you be pleased with the what now? With the sacrifices of righteousness. You see that? The Lord is pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. Give me that into 26, 25. Let's get that. What does it mean, righteousness? The sacred, now we offer up sacrifices of righteousness now. We no longer offer those sacrifices back then. So the sacrifices that we used to do back then was a, what? was a shadow of good things to come. Was rehearsal. We were rehearsing. So that today we may be able to offer the sacrifices of righteousness now. So but that was a, what? It was a rehearsal. Okay, read that. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness, come on. If we observe to do all these commandments yeah. before the Lord our God. As he has commanded us. You see that thing? So go back. Psalm 51 verse 19. The book of Psalms, chapter 51 verse 19. Come on. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. You see that? So the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. We went, this, we went over this yes, not so long ago. If you are paying attention, use your pen to connect the precepts. Now read that again, verse 19. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 19. Read. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. So the Lord is pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. What is righteousness? The keeping of God's laws. Read. With bent offering. Uh -huh. So now, the, the sacrifices, the, oh, the sacrifices of righteousness, right? Righteous sacrifices, guess what? These bent offerings and whole bent offerings and bullets and all that, that translates into us now. You understand that? Exactly. We are that living sacrifice now. We offer sacrifices of righteousness. Read. And hold bent offering. Mm -hmm. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thy altar. So those bullocks that we're offering now, guess what? Remember, Christ was the sacrifice once for all. So now we are the sacrifice. And guess what? We sacrificed. These offerings were done upon the altar. Guess what? Our bodies now is the temple. Exactly. You see that? So when you keep God's commandments... You are offering upon the altar, which is your body, your temple. You see that, right? Yes, sir. Uh huh. Now, Sarah 35 and 1. Ecclesiasticus 35 and verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 1. Go ahead. He that keepeth the law mm. bringeth offerings enough. You see that? It's the same thing we read in Psalm 61, verse 19. Go ahead. He that taketh heed to the command mm -hmm. offereth a peace offering. You see that thing? You offer a peace offering when you take heed to the commandments of the Most High God. Understand that? You understand? Because I'm going to give an example, okay? Give me the book of Leviticus real quick. I'm going to show you something. Leviticus. Yes. Mm. Let me see, let me see, let me see which one I want. Yeah, give me Leviticus 3. Leviticus 3 and 1. I'm going to give an example of a peace offering. The book of Leviticus, chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering. If your oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering. Go ahead. If he offer it of the head. If you offer it of the head, that's the cattle. Go ahead. When that be a male or female, Read. he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. It must be without blemish before the Lord. This is what we used to do. Go ahead. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering mm. and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Read. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. Read. So remember. This blood that has been sprinkled upon the altar round about today is the blood of Christ. 
We shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Go ahead. He shall offer of the sacrifice of peace offering. Read. An offering made by fire unto the Lord. Read. The fat that covereth the inward. Mm. And the fat that is upon the inward. Read. And the two kidneys. And the fat that is on them. Read. Which is by the flanks. Mm. And the cowl by above the liver. With the kidneys, it shall be taken away. It shall be it, meaning the, the fat shall be taken away for a peace offering. Because that fed one is the Lord's. Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. Uh-huh. And the priest shall bend them upon the altar. Read. It is the food. It is the food of the offerings made by fire. For a sweet savor. Mm -hmm. All the fat is the Lord. All the what? All the fat is the Lord. All the fat is the Lord. Jump up to verse 5. Now you understand. Go ahead. The book of Leviticus chapter 3 verse 5. Read. And Aaron's sons shall bend it on the altar mm -hmm. upon the burnt sacrifice. Read. Which is upon the wood. When he says upon the burnt sacrifice because that's the altar of burnt offerings. Read. Which is upon the wood that is on the fire. Mm. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. So I just gave you an example of a peace offering. So now the peace offering, the fat is the Lord's. That was that was that's what made the sweet savor unto the Lord for a sweet smelling savor. Give me Sarah 47 and 1, real quick. Ecclesiastes 47 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 1. Watch this. Oh, oh dead, how bitter is the remembrance of thee. No, 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 no. Sarah 47 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 1. Watch this. And after him rose up Nathan, the mm -hmm. prophet. Go ahead. No, no, no. And after him rose up Nathan to prophesy. We were just reading about this earlier on, right? In Second Samuel. Go ahead. And after him rose up Nathan to prophesy. In the time of David. In the time of David. Go ahead. Watch this. As in as as is the fat taken away from the peace offering. As is the fat taken away from the peace offering. Go ahead. So was David chosen out of the children of Israel. You see that thing right there? You see how this comes together, man? So when you read the first five books, don't just be reading past that. You understand? There's a reason for that. So when you read this and you didn't read the book of you, you're not going to understand what they are saying. You understand? So now, go back. Sirach 35 and 1. Sirach 35 and verse 1. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verse 1. Come on. He that keepeth the law, mm -hmm. bringeth offerings enough. They bring offerings enough. God meaning it's enough offering. They suffice. Go ahead. He that taketh ye to the commandment. You take ye to the commandments, meaning you have fear upon you. Read. Offer a peace offering. You are offering a peace offering. Because guess what? The fat that was on the liver on the cow, you understand? So all that fat will be taken away and be put on the altar of burnt offerings and become a sweet smelling savor unto the Lord for a peace offering unto the Lord. So that's what we're doing right now. So the rehearsals that we do during the time of when we're in the wilderness, you understand? We're doing it now, but now we're doing it in the spiritually. You understand that? We're doing it spiritually. Okay. Now, watch this. Give me the book of 1 Peter 2 and 5. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Remember now, we're still dealing with the strange. The strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Remember what they, uh, uh, you know, Nadab and Abayu, what did, what did they do? They offer strange incense. Strange. Mm. When they when you offer strange incense, what is that called? Idolatry. You proud. Mm-hmm. You understand? Don't forget the thought. I know some of you have gotten lost now. Don't get lost. Pay attention, man. Read that. Where does it go? First Peter. Chapter First Peter 2 and 5. Let's read that. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Come on. First book of Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Watch this. Ye also, as lively stone, Ray? are built up a spiritual house. You see that? We have built up a spirit. This spiritual house is our bodies now. Read. And holy, priesthood. and holy priesthood that we read about in Exodus 19 verse 6, which we are approaching to be, to get into that realm. Read. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. What type of sacrifices? Spiritual sacrifices. Spiritual sacrifices. No longer because we are, we are poor. Where are you going to get the, the lamb, the goat, the turtle dove, the pigeon, the young, you don't have money. We broke. Yes, 
So you see the Lord, the Lord may, the, the Moksa is merciful unto us. He knew we are going to be in captivity. We're going to be broke. We're going to be poor. We're going to have nothing. He said, listen, you, the, 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 the cheapest, the most affordable way to offer up sacrifices, fast, pray, and apply the laws of God to your life. That's it. It don't cost you nothing. Yes, sir. <laughs> you understand that? Yes, sir. It don't cost you nothing, man. Okay. Read again. First Peter 2 and 5. As we got Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Read. Ye also, as lively stones. As lively stones. Come on. Are built up a spiritual house. You are built up a spiritual house. Read. And holy priesthood. And holy priesthood. Read. To offer up spiritual sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So that's what we're doing right now. We're offering spiritual sacrifice. We keep the commandments. That's us offering spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord. Now. Go back to Saragna again, 32 verse 18. No, no, go back to Exodus 30 verse 9. Go back there. Exodus 30 and verse 9. The book of Exodus chapter 30 verse 9. Come on. Ye shall offer no strange incense. Don't offer no strange incense. You understand? So in the lands of our captivities now, don't be offering strange incense, man. The, the offering of strange incense, that's the reason why you are strange. The only way you can offer strange incense is because you're strange. You understand? You are strange from the laws of God. The Lord don't recognize you. Neither does he acknowledge your offering thereby. You understand? Now give me Leviticus 10 and 1. Leviticus 10 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. And Nadab and Abihu, mm -hmm. the sons of Aaron, Watch this. took either of them his censer. A censer. You see the golden censer that we have? Bring it. Brother John, bring me that golden censer. So the people may see what we're talking about. You understand? This right here, this is the golden censer. You understand? This right here. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Leviticus, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. And Nadab and Abihu, mm. the sons of Aaron, Go ahead. took either of them his censer, Read. and put fire therein, Read on. and put incense thereon, uh -huh. and offered strange fire before the Lord. You see what they did? They offered strange fire before the Lord. Go ahead. Which he commanded them not to. Because he did not command them. Because why? They were self-willed. They had the devil and Satan was on the brain. Read that Bible again, verse 1. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. And Nadab and Abihu, mm. the sons of Aaron, Go ahead. took either of them his censer. Read. And put fire therein. Come on. And put incense thereon. Now, now, the reason why I'm going over this is because remember now, we're dealing with the first, the anatomy of a what? Of sin. So it's pride. So because you have pride, because there's no cancer. The only way when the only time pride enters in is because there's no counsel. You counsel yourself. You tell yourself, no, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. You are ill-advised. Nobody tell you nothing. You do whatever you want. Nobody can call you. No, no, don't do that. You say to hell with that. I don't want to do that. I got this. So you cannot be moving like that. You offering strange fire before the Lord. The Lord will consume you with that fire. You understand? Okay. Now watch this. Um, read Numbers chapter 3 verse 4. So now, the reason why I'm going over this is because counsel, that's what makes people to be wise. Men and women, married and unmarried. You don't see counsel, you offering strange. Because when you come for counsel, you're going to come with strange fire. You're going to come with strange incense to come and offer those sacrifices before the Lord. What do you think going to happen? The most I'm going to consume you the same way you consumed Nadim and Abayu. You understand that? Now read that. Numbers chapter 3 verse 4. Read that. The book of Numbers chapter 3 verse 4. Uh -huh. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord. They what now? Died before the Lord. They died before they dropped dead. The most I consumed them because what? They came and offered strange fire before the Lord in their golden census, which the Lord commanded them not. Why am I going? I'm going over this because remember, don't just leave it back there during the time when we were in the wilderness with Moses. No, no. Bring it over here in 2024. You understand? You come for counsel, you lie. You come for counsel, you deceptive. 
You come for counsel, you have conspired. This will not be you coming with strange fire. What do you think gonna happen to you? You understand? Married women, married men. Unmarried women, unmarried men. You come to for counsel, but you are not being forthcoming. You offering strange fire, man. You gonna get burned. The Lord will consume you. You understand? Go ahead. When they offered strange fire. When they did what now? When they offered strange fire. When they offered strange fire. Come on. Before the Lord. Mm -hmm. In the wilderness of mm -hmm. Sina. Watch this. And they had no children. Stop. You see what happens here? This is what we're reading here. And they had no what Read that again. I want you to read this. I want this thing to hit home. And read they, it again. And they had no children. And they had no children. You see what the Lord did to them? They didn't even have children because they came and offered strange fire before the Lord. So it is today. These are the consequences when you come deceptive before the Lord, man. Because you don't see us the prophets of the Most High back on the earth. You just think of that nigga right there. That's how you look at us again. You don't believe nothing. You don't, you read the Bible, but you don't believe nothing that is written in it. So the Most High said, you see what he did to Nareb and Abayu? They died without children even. Understand then, this is for married couples and for unmarried ones. The sisters that are not married, how you know you're not going to get children when you get married? You don't know. Because you're, coming, you're not coming correct. You're walking in a crooked way, like Gollum goes with Smeagol. You ever seen Smeagol how he walks? Crooked. You don't, don't be playing with fire, man. You see what happened to Nadab and Abayu? They got burned when they played with that fire. Read again, verse 4. The book of Numbers, chapter 3, verse 4. Read. And Nadab and Abayu mm -hmm. died before the Lord. They died before the Lord. Go ahead. When they offered strange fire before the Lord. Read. In the wilderness of Sinai. Mm -hmm. And they had no children. They had no children. Go ahead. And Eliezer and Itamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. Because remember, Aaron had four sons. Nadab, Nadab Abayu, Itamar, and Eliezer. So two of them, they were put to death by the Mosai. You understand? And they do not even have a seed of them alive that was left after they was gone. You see how the Lord deals? The most Aaron plays the king of terrors. That's what he's called in the Bible. Now, watch this. I'm, I'm going. Numbers 26 verse 60. Numbers 26 verse 60. And remember, this goes into pride. When you have pride, guess what? You're going to say to hell with the council. I'm showing you the consequences of that. Now read it. Numbers 26, verse 60. The book of Numbers, chapter 26, verse 60. Uh -huh. And unto Aaron was born Nadab and Abayu, Eliezer and Ithamar. Read. Remember, this, we, this happened in the book of Leviticus when they offer strange fire. The law was given in Exodus 30, verse 9. You shall I, don't offer strange fire thereon. They just ignored that. They said, to hell with you, Moses, to hell with that. Read. And Nadab and Abayu died mm -hmm. when they offered strange fire before the Lord. So in the book of Numbers, the Lord is repeating this again for our learning. He says, don't do this. So he keeps repeating it over and over because we tend to be what? We are forgetful. You understand? We forgetful hearers. Give me, give me Deuteronomy 32 verse 16. Deuteronomy 32 verse 16. Watch this. Because remember, who who do who the way they sacrifice him to? Think about it. Satan. Who were they sacrificing to? Satan. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, verse 16. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 16. Read. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. That's it right there. Strange gods. You see that? Because they offered strange fire before the Lord. That's why it says a strange and a proud man is not daunted with fear. Why? What is the strange? The strange is the strange gods that they're worshipping and they are burning incense unto. That's what the Lord is showing us here, man. Okay. Verse, 30, verse 16 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 16. Read. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. They provoked the Lord to jealousy with strange gods. That's why it says a strange and a proud man is not daunted with fear, even when he himself is done without counsel. Read. 
with ab with abomination mm -hmm. provoke they him to anger. You see that with abominations provoke they him to anger. You see that you know what it takes for you to have to provoke the Lord is premeditated. Pain. When you provoke in the Lord, it means you are evil is premeditated. You premeditate premeditate the evil. You provoke in the Lord to anger with your abominations. Keep reading. They sacrifice unto devils. Now he's making it plain. The strange gods is the devils. They are sacrificing unto. They sacrifice unto devils. Go ahead. Not to God. Read. To God. Who they knew not. Come on. To new God. To what now? To new God. These new idols that they've set up in their hearts. Like it says in Ezekiel, the 17th chapter. That's what we're reading it. Go ahead. That came newly up. That came newly up in their minds that they set up to worship. Read. Whom your father. Feared not. Whom your fathers feared not. Meaning your fathers did not worship those gods. When he says whom your fathers feared not. That's what he's talking about. Now give me Joshua 24 verse 19. Because here's another thing. What you are going to realize that when it. You see Israel. Listen man. The Israelites our people. We like to say yeah we will do. Whatsoever the Lord has said Moses. We will do and be obedient. They just be lying. Mm. You understand? Just look up, go to Google and type liar. And you go to images, a Negro will pop up. You understand what I'm saying? He will pop right up. He said, mm -hmm. Tyrone, Mingos. You understand? Mm -hmm. Timos will be popping up. You understand what I'm saying? Now read that. They clone Tyrone. <laughs> they clone. I know, you know I need to watch that movie, right? I've seen the trailer, but I actually have to. I need, I want to watch the movie. Yes, you understand? I want to see how they clone Tyrone. Yes, sir. Now read that. Joshua twenty four verse nineteen. Yeah. The book of Joshua chapter nine, chapter twenty four verse nineteen. Watch this. And Joshua said unto the people, uh -huh. "Ye cannot serve the Lord. Read, for he is an holy God." You see what he's saying? You, he says, "You cannot serve the Lord because he is an holy God." Why is he saying that? Because Israel like to sacrifice unto idols and not to God. You know why he's saying that? Jump up to verse 15 so we can see that. The book of Joshua. Oh, start at verse 14. Mm -hmm. Watch this. The book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 14. Watch this. Now therefore, fear mm -hmm. the Lord. Now, you, what now? Now therefore, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. You see, because Israel don't want to do that. Israel don't want to serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. They are always murmuring when they have to serve the Lord. Read. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. Because when say on the other side of the flood, that means where? In Egypt. Because we serve gods over our forefathers, they serve new gods over there. It's the gods of Egypt. There's even movies about that. Read. And in Egypt. Mm. And serve ye the Lord. You see that? Because those gods on the other side of the flood was the gods of the Canaanites. Read. And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord. Because that's the problem with Israel. It seemed evil unto them to serve the Lord. That's why we are in the conditions we're in right now. Because it seemed evil unto us to serve the Lord. Read. Choose you this day whom you will serve. He says make a decision. Make a decision this day whom you are going to serve. Go ahead. Whether the God which your father said mm. that went on the other side of the flood. That's in Egypt. Go ahead. Or the gods of the Amorites. Or the gods of the Amorites. In whose land he dwelt. Read. But as for me and my house. But as for me and my house. Go ahead. We will serve the Lord. And guess what? That's twofold. Remember we're dealing about the spiritual houses. As for me and my house. Those spiritual houses. It's not just talking about the physical house. No, the spiritual one as well. You understand? Go ahead. And the people answered and said. Listen to what Israel says now. Classic. These are Israel Classics 101. Listen to what they say. Go ahead. And the people answered and said, mm -hmm. God forbid that we should forsake the Lord mm -hmm. to serve other gods. Watch this. Go ahead. For the Lord our God, mm -hmm. he, he it is, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt Read. from the house of bondage mm. and which did, and which did those great signs in our sight. Meaning they saw the signs. They saw them. That's why it says, this generation seeketh after a sign, and they shall not sign be given unto them. Who was he talking to? Who was Christ talking to? 
The same generation that Joshua is dealing with right here is the same generation that Moses was dealing with. It is the same generation that Christ was talking to. It says, this generation seeketh after a sign. What generation? The generation of Moses and Joshua. The same spirits, they are back. You understand that? Read. And preserved us in all the way where we went. Uh -huh. And among all the people through whom we passed. Read. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, mm -hmm. even the Amorites. Even the Amorites, go ahead. Which dwelled in the land. Read. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. They lie. You see what I'm saying? Just lies. Breaking the ninth command, get that. Exodus 20. They just be lying, man. Because, because some people don't believe it. Hey, we are in captivity, man. What the hell is this? They, they're thinking, no, 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 but no. Some of us did, no. Look where we are. Rikoka Azi, right now. Who would have thought? Hmm? You ever thought that you, from the tabernacle of the congregation, man, from seeing Solomon in his glory, hmm? From, listen, to here, in the cases where there's many bathrooms and whatnot, there's always a sewer. Mm. When you go, just go out. Pass, go out there, you'll see garbage everywhere, poop everywhere. Mm. Could you believe it? You can't believe it. Look where we are. You understand? So, don't say, no, we did. No, we did. The example is, hello, you understand? Read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 16. Read. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy name. You see that thing right there? <laughs> Guess what? We did. We bear false witness against Joshua right here. You understand? So go back to Joshua 24. Read verse 19 now. The book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 19. Read. And Joshua said unto the people, mm -hmm. Ye cannot serve the Lord. You see what he's telling them? You cannot serve the Lord. Because he knew Israel was just lying over here. Read. For he is an holy God. Uh -huh. He is a jealous God. Read. He will not forgive your transgression, nor your sin. Because why? Because of idolatry. You understand? Because pride has entered in. Because pride has entered in, idolatry has entered in. Cancel has been put out the way. To hell with cancel. You understand? So now we're dealing with the anatomy of sin. To hell with cancer, pride enters in, idolatry enters in. Go ahead, verse 20. If ye forsake the Lord mm -hmm. and serve strange God. And do what now? And serve strange God. That's why it says, a strange and a proud man is not daunted with fear. What makes him strange? Because the, what makes him strange is the strange gods whom he worships. That's what makes the woman strange because of these idols that is in her mind. Read. Then he will turn it to your head. Mm, mean the Lord will hurt you. Go ahead. And consume you. The same way you consume Nadab and Abayu when they offer strange incense before the Lord. Read. After that, he has done you good. Mm -hmm. Because he delivered us out of Egypt. Go ahead. And the people said unto Joshua. Listen, listen good. Listen, classic Israel 101. What did they say? Nay, uh -huh. but, but we will serve the Lord. <laughs> they just be lying, man. Just lies. You understand? Read. And Joshua said unto the people, uh -huh. Ye are witnesses against yourselves. You see what he said? You are witnesses against yourselves. Go ahead. That ye have chosen the Lord. You have chosen you the Lord. That ye have chosen you the Lord. That Read ye that have again. chosen you the Lord. Read. To serve him. To what now? To serve him. Mm -hmm. And they said, We are witnesses. Again. Israel just be lying, man. You understand? They are making empty promises up in here. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 5 verse 2. They just be lying again. Because Israel cannot, we cannot help ourselves, man. We just been demonic. But today we're fasting, we're afflicting our souls that the Lord may have mercy upon us. But if you believe that your, your, your garment is not filthy, this is not the place for you. <laughs> if your garment is squeaky clean, you are a smoke in God's nose. You understand? Go back to the Christian church. Because in the Christian church, they are clean, they are squeaky clean. They're good. You understand? Now read them. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 2. Go ahead. Be not rash with thy mouth. Don't be rash with thy mouth. Go ahead. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter, to utter anything before God. It didn't Israel do that during the time of Joshua? There was haste. They didn't consider what Joshua just said. He says, you are witnesses against yourself. They didn't take heed to that thing. 
Now read that verse again. One more again from the top. Come on. Read. Be not rash with thy mouth. Don't be rash with your mouth. Read. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Go ahead. For God is in heaven. Because God is in heaven. Go ahead. And thou upon earth. And you are here on earth. You are in captivity. Read. Thy fault. Uh -huh. Let thy words be few. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Isn't that what uh, the Lord told Isaiah to tell Ahaz? You understand? Go ahead. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. You see that? Because a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Because why? Israel just be dreamers, man. You understand? Feel the dreamers. You understand? Go ahead. And a fool's voice is known by multitude of ways. That's it right there. A fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Proverbs 10 verse 19. Let's get that real quick. Watch this. Proverbs 10 verse 19. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19. Go ahead. In the multitude of words. In the multitude of words. In the multitude of words. Read. They wanted not sin. They wanted not sin. Meaning there's sin in the midst of it. You understand? Go ahead. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. You see that thing? You know, you know when to speak. Meaning what? You got timing. You know when to speak and what to say. You understand that? That's why it says, be not hasty to utter anything before God. You understand? Now watch this. Get that in Zerach 32 real quick. Yeah. Zerach 32 verse 7. Watch this. You know, you know what? Mm. Read verse 4. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 4. Pour not out words where there is a where there is a musician. It says, pour out, pour not out words where there is a musician. Musician is playing music, right? right. And you are speaking while the music is playing. Nobody's gonna hear you. Go ahead. And show not false wisdom out of time. Because it's like you showing wisdom out of time. Don't nobody hear you. Go ahead. Watch this. A concert of music is a a concert of music in a banquet of wine. A concert of music in a banquet of wine. Right. Is as a signet of a carbuncle set in gold. Uh -huh. Go ahead. As a signet of emerald set in a, in a work of gold. An emerald, remember, an emerald is a stone. Okay. Is as, as a signet of an emerald set in a work of what? In a work of gold. This goes back to Exodus uh, 27. When it goes into the four rows of stones and whatnot, you can read about that. So this is not, he's not know, he, he knows exactly what he's saying. You might, he's assuming you know the history. You understand? You get the precept for this. Go ahead. So is the melody of music with pleasant wine. You see that? So is the melody of music with pleasant wine. Meaning what? They go hand in hand. Hmm. You see that thing? They go hand in hand, man. But watch this. Go ahead. Speak, young man. Now he's making it play. What you ought to do. Go ahead. If there be need of thee. If there's a need for you to speak. Meaning, young man, there's no need for you to say nothing. Just be quiet. You understand? You don't need to say nothing. Go ahead. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Because you had to be asked twice to think, to see, okay, they must be talking to me because they call me twice. Remember um, Samuel, the prophet? When Eli, he, he was called more than once. Then that's when Eli understood, or okay, is the Lord speaking unto him. So that's what he's talking about. He was asked twice. That's when he was like, there must be something going on here. You understand? Go ahead. Let thy speech be short. Let thy speech be short. Keep it short. Go ahead. Comprehending much in few words. Because you are listening more and talking less. Read. Be as one that knoweth. Be as one that knoweth. Go ahead. And yet holdeth his tongue. Watch this. If thou be among great men, uh -huh. make not thyself equal with them. Because when you have much words in the multitude of great men, you making yourself equal with them. Read. And when ancient men are in place, read. Use not many words. You mean shut the hell up. You understand? Meaning shut the hell up. Shut up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what he's saying. Now, let's go back now. Go back to Joshua 24. Yes, Joshua 24. Read verse 21 once again. No, no, verse 22. Listen to what Israel is saying, man. The 12 tribes of Israel. Listen to what they say. 
the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 22. Uh -huh. And Joshua said unto the people, mm. Ye are witnesses against yourselves. You are witnesses against yourselves. Go ahead. That ye have chosen you, the Lord, mm. to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. We are witnesses. You see what they said? Read. Now therefore, put away, said he, mm. the strange God. The what now? The strange God. So when he says, A strange and a proud man, this is a man that worship idols. When he's a strange and proud. What makes this man or woman strange is the strange gods whom they worship. Right? Which are among you. Mm -hmm. And incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. You see that? And incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Give me Judges 10 verse 16. The book of Judges. So, counsel is important. You better see counsel up in here. Don't be sitting when you doing things by yourself. You don't seek no counsel. You seek no counsel, you simple as hell. You must seek counsel to get your mind right. The minute you don't seek counsel, you see the anatomy of sin? Pride. That's the number one, by the way. Because when pride enters in, that means counsel has left the room. You're on your own. You understand? Read that. Judges 10 verse 16. The book of Judges chapter 10 verse 16. Because now, remember... Counsel is put out the way. Pride has entered in. Idolatry has entered in now. Here's what happens next. We watch God. Go ahead. And they put away the strange gods from among them. They put away the strange gods from among them. Go ahead. And served the Lord. Mm -hmm. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. You see that? It says his soul was grieved for the what now? For the misery of Israel. You see what happens when pride enters in? You are miserable. When pride enters in, now your life is miserable. You understand? You are not a sweet smelling savor. Mm -mm, you are a stinking funk. You understand? You'll be funking up in here. Understand that? So the Lord is letting you know. You put counsel out the way, pride enters in. Now you're miserable. Your misery loves company. You're going to get other brothers and sisters involved in your misery. Now you're breaking the royal law. You see how this goes? You cause other people to sin now. Now, um, give me Revelation 13 verse 15. Because what brings about misery is what? Is because you double-minded. Because remember, when you put counsel out the way, guess what? Pride enters in. Because now you double-minded. Should I seek counsel? Should I not? Should I not seek counsel? Should I ask for counsel? Should I not? Should I not? The Bible is clear. Seek counsel. Counsel before every action. But you're still asking the same question. Should I or should I not? You see that? Now you double-minded. Hold that James 1 and 8. Get that. James 1 and 8. Let's get that first. Lord's will. We make it to the kingdom. I want to meet the Apostle James, man. Make no mistake about it. The Apostle James, man. Now read that. Come on. The James 1 and 8. No, start with verse 5. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 5. Go ahead. If any of you lack wisdom. Because guess what? For you to continue counsel, you have recognized that you lack wisdom. But when you don't see counsel, you have recognized when you have concluded in your mind that you don't need no counsel. you good. You don't have filthy garments on. You got this. Go ahead. If any of you lack wisdom, uh -huh. let him ask of God. Let him ask of God to ask me to pray. Read. That given to all men liberally. Liberally, freely. Remember when we're going over, we're going over the peace offerings earlier on? Because remember, you needed to have money to do this. So now the Lord says, I'm gonna, if you pray for it, I'm going to give it to you freely. Liberally. You understand? Read. And I pray that not. Read. And it shall be given to him. It shall be given him. Read. And it shall be given him. Come on. But let him let him ask in faith. But you must ask in faith. But how can you have faith when you have pride? You cannot have faith and pride in the same spirit. But guess what? Men and women up in here have convinced themselves and they think they can convince us that they can have both. I get you don't see cancer. And when you do come for cancer, you come with strange incense. Hmm? You come and offer strange incense at the cancer because you believe that your strange incense that you worship is going to deceive us up at the table. You're wrong about that. So now the mind is sick. The whole head is sick.
bruises and and he says sores and bruises and putrefying sores from head to toe you sick this is a sick negro you understand read again the book of james chapter one verse six mm -hmm. but let him ask him faith go ahead nothing wavering nothing wavering you cannot be wavering you say mm, will i get it will i not am i gonna take the concept am i not you just you double-minded nah but i don't trust them i don't trust them niggas because that's how you see isn't it Mm, duckies, what ducky? I've been there at the table. That's how you look at us, man. That's why when you come for counsel, you don't take heed to the counsel that you receive. Nor do you believe it. When we ask you questions, you don't say nothing. Because you got this. But you're not realizing that you're offering strange incense to the Lord. You don't get it. You're tempting the Lord with evil. You're provoking him to anger with your strange gods, whom your fathers knew not. And you don't see counsel, you doing the same thing, by the way. When you don't see counsel, you offering strange incense to the Lord. Because every day you pray, who are you praying to? The Lord? No. You're not praying to the Lord, man. You're praying to Satan. Because Satan is on your brain. He be tickling you up. Every single time when you need to come for counsel, Satan be tickling you, then you don't go for counsel. You got this. Because this whole time you're sitting on Satan's lap, he be singing you lullabies. Mm. Yes. You over there, you, you basically, you, you were fighting with Esau to sit on Satan's lap. You be sucking on his nipples. You supposed to suck on these two nipples up here. You busy sucking on Satan's nipples. What do you think coming out there? Milk? No. Not milk. Oh no. There's no way that milk is coming. There's no milk coming up in there, man. Blood. You'll be sucking Satan's blood from his nipples. Yes. Nipple is in the Bible. <laughs> you understand? Now, read the Bible again, man. Verse 6. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 6. Go ahead. But let him ask in faith. But let him ask in faith. Go ahead. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. Because when you come for counsel, you don't answer nothing. You don't want to tell us nothing. Or you don't come for counsel. You wavering. You have no faith. You faithless. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. I guess you forgot that scripture. Eh? Go ahead. But, but, let him ask in faith. Great. Nothing wavering. Go ahead. For ye that wavering. It's like a wave of the sea. You see, he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea. I mean, you've gone to Devon and, you know, and all that. Kimberly, you'll be seeing the beach be doing all that. Waves going up and back and forth. That's what the Lord is talking about. Your spirit is like a wave. Right? Driven with the wind and toss. You see that? Because the reason why the waves do that, they are driven by the wind. To and fro. Right? Watch this. For let not that man Because, because, let not that man or woman Go ahead Think that ye shall receive anything of the Lord You're not going to receive anything of the Lord Because he said, let him ask in faith How can you ask in faith But you are like a wave of the sea Driven to and fro by the wind This wind is the wind of doctrines That are up in the, in your mind The winds of doctrines, they are the ones Read, watch this a double-minded man. Because there's no cancer. Like your pride has entered in. There's no cancer. Now you double-minded. You are like that wave of the sea. Driven to and fro by the winds of doctrine up in there. Right? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. No, no. Some of his ways. In all his ways. No, there's a benefit of the doubt going on up in, in there. In all his ways. In all his ways. In all her ways too. When you double-minded, the Lord not dealing with you. That's why it says, let's get it. Revelation 13. Revelation chapter 13. No, no, 3. I'm sorry. Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3. Read verse 15. Here's the precept. Let's get it. The book of Revelation chapter 3. Verse 15. Watch this. I know thy works. I know thy works. The Lord says he knows our works. Go ahead. That thou art neither cold nor hot. He says you are neither cold, neither are you hot. But what are you? I would that thou wert cold or hot. Watch this. So then, mm -hmm. because thou art lukewarm. You see that you are what? You double-minded, he's saying. Because you are lukewarm, you don't trust the Lord. You don't trust his commandments. You don't believe in the commandments, but you're faking the funk, being a perfect Israelite. Read. 
and neither cold nor hot. You are neither cold, you are neither hot. Go ahead. I will spew thee out of thy mouth. Meaning, I'm going to kill you, the Lord is saying. Read. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Because thou said, Read. I am rich. I got a job, I'm employed, mm -hmm. I got a salary, I get paid every month. You understand? Read. And increased with goods. And increased with goods. I got a car. I've got a big table, mahogany. That's what they call me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And I have need of nothing. It meaning I don't need no, I don't need no counsel. I don't need nothing. I don't need no nothing because I'm a, I'm gonna translate it in today's talk. I got a job. I got a car. I got a house. I don't need you niggas. I don't need the Lord either. I don't need to come for counsel. And if I do, listen, I don't gonna tell you nothing because I got this. I got all these things. What you talking about? I'm letting you know this is how men and women think in Israel. You forgetting what you are in captivity, by the way. Can you believe that? You see, your job, which is the crumbs that are falling from the white man's dirty table, you get it, they are not going to deliver you out of captivity. But you think those little sins will deliver you from captivity. They will not deliver you. Only wisdom will deliver you from captivity. That's what Christ said in Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 18. We read it earlier. Eh? Go ahead. Because thou sayest, I am rich mm. and increased with goods. Go ahead. And have need of nothing. Read. And knowest not that thou art wretched. You are what now? Thou art wretched. You are wretched, the Lord is saying. The Lord says you are wretched before him. Watch this. And miserable. And what now? And miserable. You see that? Misery. Misery loves company. When pride enters in, then idolatry. Then what happens next? Misery. You are miserable then at this point. Go ahead. And poor. And what now? And poor. The Lord comes back and says, you thought you was rich, you poor. You thought you was rich, the Lord says, you poor. Those little sense that you're getting every month, you're thinking, mm, I don't need the Lord. I got this. You poor, the Lord is saying. Read. And blind. You blind also. You don't see. You don't see that you are in the midst of sin. You don't see that you're wrong. Go ahead. And naked. And what now? And naked. Puma, puna, puna. That's it. Let's keep it a hundred. Let's, let's use that word because you'll get it. Uma, puna, puna. Isn't that what the song, right? Yes, sir. Now, what, what does it say? Uma, puna, puna, satan. Yes, yes. Uma, puna, puna, satan. That's the one, right? I, don't, I, I forgot the tune, but yes. Mm -hmm. That's what we're reading here. The Lord says, you wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. Mm. This is Christ speaking, man. You understand? This is the son of God speaking. So, hold that. Now, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 10. We're coming back. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 10. Watch this. I'm showing you the anatomy of sin. We're dissecting this thing on the operating table, man. This is the operating table right here. Now, read it. Wisdom of Solomon 3 verse 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 10. Watch this. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imagination. Don't come for counsel. You have your own imaginations. You're gonna, you try to deceive us with your own imaginations. That ain't gonna work. Go ahead. Which have neglected the righteous. They were, they've done what now? Which have neglected the righteous. They've neglected the righteous. Go ahead. And forsaken the Lord. They've forsaken the Lord. So, guess what? You don't see cancer? Guess what? Pride enters in. Idolatry enters in. Misery enters in. Go ahead. For whoso despises wisdom and nature. You despise wisdom and nature. We were just going over this, right? You despise wisdom and nature. What happens? He is miserable. He is what now? He is miserable. He or she is miserable. The Lord is letting you know. The reason why you are miserable is because you despise wisdom and nature. That's the reason. It's not because you are broke. It's not because you have no money. Mm -mm. It's because you despise wisdom and nature of the scriptures. Read. And their hope is in vain. You are hopeless. And because remember, when he says your hope is in your hope in your, or your hope is, is vain, is you know why? Because you put your hope in your in the job that you have. You put your hope in your car. You put your hope in your house. You put your hope in this little bit of little sense of savings that you have in your bank. You put your hope in there. You understand? And then 
the, the, when you go to the bank or you want you want to withdraw your, your investments, they say, no, we just filed for bankrupts. What are you going to do? You understand? We're liquidating our assets. Now what? You're not going to get your money back, Pell. You know that you're not going to get your money back, right? Sad. They just say we file for bankruptcy. We're liquidating our assets. That money is gone. There's nothing you can do. I mean nothing. So the Lord is letting you know, do not put your mind in uncertain riches. I'm paraphrasing it. You know why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because a lot of the times, brothers don't seek counsel because you think you have something better than this. A lot of the times when you hate counsel, you think you have something better than this Bible. Which is the things you worship. And because of that, the Lord will show you some flames. Ne? I give you a strange. He will set you on fire. You understand? Because remember, the fire, the, 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 the incense and the fire were of the sacrifices, it had to burn always, all the time. Let's get it. I'm digressing, but I'm going to go there. Give me that in uh, Leviticus 6 verse 12. Watch this. This is the law of the burnt offerings. Read Leviticus 6 verse 8 and 9. Then we're going to jump. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 8. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Read. Command Aaron and his son, saying, mm -hmm. This is the law of burnt of the this, burnt offerings. This is the law of the burnt offerings. So every offering had a law associated with it. You understand? Go ahead. It is, it is the burnt offering mm -hmm. because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning. Read. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. You see the thing? It says all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. Read verse 12 now. Verse 12. Read. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. Read. The it is the altar of burnt offerings. Go ahead. It shall not be put out. It shall not be what now? It shall not be put it out. It shall not be put out. Read. And the priest shall burn wood on it mm. every morning. Every morning. And lay burnt offering in order upon it. Read. And ye shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. The fat of the peace offering. Watch this. Go ahead. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Uh -huh. It shall never go out. Read that again. Read that again. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Come on. It shall never go out. It shall never go out. What is the fire this day? Give me Jeremiah 5.14. What is the fire, man? It says it shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never be put out. So, when you don't come for counsel, it don't mean the Bible don't go out. It just keep going. Every day there's a class. Every day, I mean daily. You don't matter when day. Every day there's a class out. It doesn't matter. You understand? Now read that. Jeremiah 5 verse 14. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. Watch this. Wait, Actually, you know what? Before you get there, get Jeremiah the 23rd chapter and the 29th verse. Read that. Watch this. I want you to marinate upon here. Marinate on this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29. Come on. Is not my work like as a fire? You see that? Is not my what now? Is not my word like as a fire? Is not my word like as a fire? Go ahead. Say the Lord. Say the Lord. And like a hammer. Like a what now? And like a hammer. Like a hammer. That's why when the scriptures coming out, they're like, you just be hammering us with the scriptures. The Bible is telling you what this book is. It's a hammer. Read. And like a hammer mm -hmm. that breaketh the rock in pieces. That breaketh the rock in pieces. You know what that rock is? That rock that be brothers and sisters be worshipping. That idol. Yes. The rock. Allah. That black rock in Mecca. Our brothers and sisters in Islam be bowing down to that demonic thing. Read it again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 29. Read. Is not my way like as a fire. Read. Says the Lord, mm -hmm. like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. It breaketh the rock in pieces. Now, Jeremiah 5, 14. 
Chapter come Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 14. Come on. Wherefore, that says the Lord God of hosts. Ray. Because he speak this word. Because we speak this word. What word is that? The fire that shall be burning always, it shall never be put out. Read. Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. You see that? I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Go ahead. And these people would. And these people would. And it shall what? And it shall devour them. It shall devour them. You see what the Bible does? That's why men and women don't want to come for counsel. Because of this. They don't want to come for counsel because of this. You already gold, but you cover the gold with wood. So now, when the Bible comes out, it catches the wood that covered the gold. You see that thing? So now, the wood catches quick. Man. It's quick. That's why it says the word of God is quick and is powerful. That's why brothers and sisters, they don't want to come for counsel. Because of this right here. Some of them, they actually resent the leadership because of counsel. Yes. Brothers and sisters, be resentful, man. They don't apply the royal law. They say, no, 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 no. I don't want to go to counsel to that one right there. I'd rather be counseled by this brother over here. Because if I go over there, he just be all personal and, and ish. <laughs> you see that thing? There's a reason for that thing, man. There's a reason why the Lord set up certain spirits that will aggravate your spirit with the scriptures. And you just gonna say, I don't wanna go for counsel because when I go over there, he never counsel good concerning me. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> You're gonna be like Ahab. You know, that's an Ahab because Ahab be saying that. He don't counsel good concerning me, so I don't go there. You understand? Now, go back. Where were we at? Wisdom of Solomon, 3 verse 11. Yeah, read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse, verse 11. Go ahead. For whoso despises wisdom and nature, he is miserable. He is miserable. Go ahead. Their hope, is, their hope is vain. And their hope is vain. Go ahead. Their labors and fruit. You see that? You labor, but you have no fruits of the Spirit. You know why? Because you're laboring in vain, because your hope is vain. Why? Because you trust upon vain things. Idols. Be that's why you're miserable. You understand? Go ahead. And they are works and profitable. And they are works and profitable. And now they're going to be asking, what is the profit of my service? When you ever hear that, they are feeling sorry for themselves. They want to be the center of attention. Don't be listening to that garbage, man. Because men that have left this truth, they say, I'm out. I'm tired. You understand? I'm taking a break. To hell with you niggas. You understand? They, they, because that's what they were saying. You understand? Yeah, that's, this is what they were saying. They says, what is the, let's get it in Zerat. What did they say? What is the again? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it right there. Zerat chapter 11 verse 23. The Lord is telling you, don't do this. Men come up on, come up on the table, they be saying this. Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 23. Read. Say not. What profit is there of my service? You see that thing? They are feeling sorry for themselves. Whenever you hear this, they, are, they want to be the center of attention. Read. And what good things shall I, shall I have hereafter? You see that? What is going to be the benefit of me doing this? I don't see the benefit of... You know why? It's called contingency talk. You ever seen the time when, when you watched The Matrix? There was a time where Neo was talking to... What's this, this guy's name? Cypher. Cypher. Is it Cypher or Cypher? Cypher. Yes potato potato same thing now what, what what did he say he said to neo imagine when somebody says you know we must go come and save the world what do you say to that that's what he said right he said what do you say to that when somebody comes to you and say we're gonna we're gonna save the world what do you say to that he wanted to understand he wanted to get what neo was thinking because that's what he was thinking he was like yeah i mean He's going to tell us, well, let's come and save the world. We're going to rule the earth and whatnot. Because that's the same thing. We're going to rule the earth. We're going to rule all nations on earth. We're going to live forever. What do you say to them? Contingency. He's trying to see, are you infected as well as he? That's what he's trying to find out. When you hear, what is the profit of my service? That's the same thing that Cypher was saying to Neo. And Neo didn't say nothing to him. He said thanks for the drink and he left because he was the one. He was tumbling down the rabbit hole. That's what he was doing, right? Yeah. 
Watch the Matrix and understand that thing, man. That's what we do. We, we watch the movie. Wisdom of Solomon 9.14. Read them. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. For the, th for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that thing right there? The thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Their thoughts are miserable, man. Why? Remember, they rejected counsel, man. Pride has entered in. Idolatry has taken place. Misery has entered in. Their thoughts, now they are miserable. Everything they say is just depressing. You understand? Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Mm -hmm. And our devices are part and say The devices that is the plans. Their hopes, their vain, their vain hopes. That's why it says our devices are but uncertain. Vain hopes. Dreamers. There's a full class online. You can watch that. And understand how dreamers behave themselves. You understand? They put their, 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 their hopes in dreams. Let's get there. Surak 34 real quick. <laughs> don't come up in here and tell me about your dream, man. I don't want to know about your dream. Surak 34. Yeah, read verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, verse 1. Read. The hopes of men. Fire of understanding are what? vain and false. Are vain and what? Are vain and false. Ray. And dreams lift up fools. There it is. Dreams lift up fools. You understand? Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Divination. This is witchcraft. Go ahead. And suit say. Mm -hmm. Marination. They will be buttering you up. Go ahead. And dreams are vain. They are vain. Go ahead. And their heart. Fancy. And the heart fancies that. The mind, remember, the mind is demonic. You understand? Go ahead. As a woman's heart in travail. As a woman's heart in travail. Meaning what? Sisters, because sisters are emotional. It says, as woman's mind is in travail, when they tap into their feelings and they want you to tap into that feeling as well, guess what? You just entered the world of divinations and soothsayings. I'm just letting you know now. You understand? They manipulate you with tears and whatnot. Don't fall for them. No. They just be manipulating with tears and all. We know we've got wailing women in Israel. It's written in the Bible. You understand? If the tears are not there, they're going to manipulate you with what? With feelings now. You know those feelings? You know how they're going to manipulate you? They will guilt trip you. Oh yes. That's another classic one. Yes. They will guilt trip you. They will say things for you to feel guilty. And guess what? The minute you are feeling guilty, you must know you are no longer operating in this Bible right here. You must feel guilty because you've committed a sin. If you haven't committed a sin, what are you feeling guilty for? What the hell is this? You should, the only time when you're feeling guilty is because you broke God's commandments. That's why it says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. But when you have a broken spirit, but you've committed no sin, what happened here? You are being manipulated. Yes, you being manipulated, they're controlling you car remote. You don't even see it. You understand? And now, when you have to butter up to the sister, you understand? You just entered into a help mode. What is wrong with you, man? Stop it. Stop it. Now read that verse again, man. Verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 5. Ray. Divinations and suit say, mm -hmm. and dreams are vain. Go ahead. And the heart fancies mm. as a woman's heart in travail. You see that as a woman's heart in travail. Feelings, you being manipulated. Jump down to verse 9. Is that what I want? No, no, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, verse 7. Watch this. For dreams have deceived men. You see that dreams have deceived many. Because sisters have dreams. Yes, they've got many dreams. And those dreams is not only the... Don't be worried. Don't think it's only the things they dream about when they're sleeping. No, it's the feelings they tell you about. And when you examine the scriptures, they don't line up with the scriptures. Those are dreams. Don't fall for it, black man. You've been falling for this for too long. Because you see now, the, the, the sisters are going to say, yo, 
Up and now he's revealing our secrets. What is he doing? Yes. You understand? I have to reveal these things, man. So that you brothers don't be manipulated by sisters up in here. Go ahead. But dreams have deceived men. The dream, dreams have deceived many. Go ahead. And they have failed that put their trust in them. You see that you put your trust in dreams, you're going to fail. The only success, you're going to only get success if you keep God's commandments. And that's it. Don't try to be manipulative and not, don't be doing stuff like that, man. We will see it. And sometimes we'll let you get away with it for you to be bold. Because sometimes you think you got away with it. You haven't. We just be watching you. Is that, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, of course. Okay. Let them do it. Yeah. The ditch. You know, you can always trust a snitch to do what a snitch does. Make, put them in a situation to snitch. Likewise, the person that be manipulating with dreams and feelings, put them in a situation that they do prove them right. You involve them. The, the day when they think they got you, you bring a piece of you chop their hair off. And then you, you let you drain the blood, you put the head back in. You understand? You attach the head back. Yes, you chop their hair off with the Bible, you drain the blood. Like they be sprinkling it around the tabernacle seven times. Yes, they dip their fingers. <laughs> they dip their fingers. Seven. That's what the priest was doing. <laughs> yeah. You understand? You do the same. Chop their hair off with the Bible and sprinkle their blood with your finger seven times. You understand? And put their head back and attach it with the Bible too. Yes, sir. You understand that? Yes, sir. Yes. That's how you must deal, black men, up in here. We are not going to be manipulated by sisters' dreams and feelings. Near. No. That's not going to happen. I know some of you are mad as hell. Go! Get mad. You must get mad up in here. Don't care. You understand? Make him mad. Make him mad. I'm going to make you mad. Now, give me Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon 13, verse 9. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 9. Come on. For if they were able to know much, know so much. What did you say? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 9. Read. For if they were able to know so much. If they were able to know so much. Because some of you think you know too much. When you come in here, you think you better. You think you know so much and all that. Just shut the hell up and be quiet. Listen and learn. Make some notes. How about that? You understand? Go ahead. That they could aim at the world. Mm -hmm. How did they not sooner find out the Lord they are? How did you not sooner? I get you know so much. How did you feel? How did you not figure this out sooner? You see, the King Solomon man was in the full spirit. If you are so clever, how did you not figure this out sooner? Because you could have. I get you are clever. You clever. You could have figured this out sooner. You could have already figured this out. You wouldn't need to be up in here to be learning. Because you could have figured this out already because you're clever. You too, some of you, you are too clever for this Bible that you dumb as hell. Because you could have figured this out sooner. Yes, could you not? Yes, you could have figured this out sooner, but you did not. You understand? Read. But miserable are they. There it is right there. You see that? They are miserable. Because they are miserable, man. Read. But miserable are they. Mm -hmm. And in dead things is their hope. You see that in dead things is their hope. Hold that. Habakkuk 218. In dead things is their hope. You see that? They hope in dead things. What is that? Idolatry. It's only circling back to idolatry, man. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18. Let's read that. Habakkuk 2 verse 18. Come on. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18. Read. What profited the graven image? What profits this graven image? Because remember, you remember we read that whenever you hear, what is the profit of my service? What is that? They want to be the center of attention. They want themselves to be worshipped. They want you to listen to their feelings now. Idol, there's idols up in there. You see how this goes? Go ahead. What profited the graven image? Read. That the maker they of had graven it. Read. The molten image. The molten image. Guess what? Shout out to the sisters who are single. 
the mountain image. Stop ordering these things online. Stop it. Sisters be ordering molten images online. Stop it. You understand? You understand? Sisters, you shake the wardrobe, there be molten images just be falling out. Different sizes up in there. Brothers also. Single brothers up in here. You understand? <laughs> Hold that. Give me that insert, man. Give me that insert 36. Because you thought I was dealing with the... Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I'm dealing with all Israel. Give me Sirach 36. Yes. Sirach 36 verse 25. Read that for me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36 verse 25. Read. Where no hedge is, mm -hmm. then the possession is spoiled. You see, where there's, there's no leader, the possession gets spoiled. Your sister does not have a hedge over her, your mindset is spoiled. Next, next part of that verse. What this? And he that has no wife. And he that has no wife. Go ahead. He will wander up and down morning. You see that? They will wander up and down morning. That's why they'll be looking for these molten images. Would you blow up dolls? But you blow up dolls. Mm -hmm. Yep. They'll be ordering them because brothers be ordering things online. You know, there's brothers who trust online so much. They'll be ordering things online. You just go through their transaction history, their credit card, you'll find a blow up doll. Investigate, you'll find a molten image up in there. Because now they are so real now these days, they talk. Artificial intelligence, ne? <laughs> yeah? They be talking, man. Let's go back. So, because now I'm activating spirits, they cannot wait to get home. <laughs> you know, that molten image be waiting. They can't wait to get home, like, yo, I be, you know, hey, I can't wait. Yes. Now read the Bible, man. Habakkuk 2, verse 18. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. Read. What profited the graven image? What profited the graven image? Go ahead. That the maker of the earth has graven mm -hmm. image. The molten image. The molten image. Go ahead. And a teacher of lies. A teacher of lies. Read. That the maker of his work. Trusted the mm -hmm. to make dumb idols. To make dumb idols. That's why now, because you trust in those dumb idols, guess what you are? Dumb. You dumb. Sorry. There's no way you can be wise when you're worshipping dumb idols. Next verse. Go ahead. Woe well, unto him that says to the wood. The wood. The Christian cross. Go ahead. Away. That's what they be. Tomorrow. This, this is our mothers, our aunties, our uncles, our grannies. They be going there tomorrow to be saying to the wood, awake. Tomorrow. Go ahead. To the dumb stone. Mm -hmm. they be, today, because yesterday it was again. Um, Muslims, ne? Yeah, to the dumb stone. They be trying to wake up that dumb rock in Mecca. You know that dumb rock in Mecca on the other side is going to be JJ sign on it? Yes. Yes, it's good. Look it up. Look it up, man. You can look it up short to the people. We're not going to share it for obvious. Can you put it up there? On that screen? Put it on that screen, man. Go ahead. Woe unto him that says to the wood, mm. Away Rain. to the damp stone, Arise, Rain. it shall teach. Mm. Behold, it is laid It is laid over with gold. Because they have to decorate it. They, they have to make it look good. That's why this is overlaid with gold and silver. Read. And there is no breath at all in the midst of it. There is no breath in the midst of that. It's a dumb idol. You understand? It's got no breath. You understand? Now, um, Wisdom of Solomon 13 verse 9. Once again. Verse 10. 13 verse 10. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 10. Watch this. But miserable are they. Read. And in dead things is their hope. And in dead things is their hope. Because remember, they know so much, but they couldn't figure this out. I get they are so clever. But they could not figure out that Christ is a black man. They couldn't figure this out. You understand? Read. Yes. That's it. That's it right there. You see that? That's the Kaaba. You see what the cover stone has on it? Yes. It's got the picture of the VJJ on it. So the people in Islam, that's this what they be bowing down to. Who are they? What are they worshipping really? You see? That's what they are worshipping. Yes. 
Mm. Keep going, man. Take that off the screen. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 10. Read. But miserable are they, mm. and in dead things is their hope. Who called them God? Who called them God? Go ahead. Which are the works of man's hands? They are works of man's hands. Read on. Gold and silver. Mm -hmm. To show at in. To show at in. To show at at at. Go ahead. To show at in. Mm -hmm. And resemblances of beasts. And they read this. Some of these idols they resemble beasts. Where do we where do we read about that? Exodus twenty verse three. Read that real quick. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3. Watch this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's it. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. The graven images that we're reading in our book, read. Oh, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Read. Oh, that is in the earth beneath. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is in the water under the earth. You see that the water under the earth, there's beasts up in there. Resemblances of beasts. The ones in the fowls in the earth, the ones on the earth, and the ones under the earth, underneath. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. That's the key. Do not bow down yourself to these things. Go ahead. Nor serve them. Mm. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Read. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Go ahead. Read. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me mm -hmm. and keep my commandments. You see that thing? This is the second commandment right here. Don't bow down yourself unto them. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 13. Read verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 10. Read. But miserable are they, mm. and in dead things is their hope. Read. Who call them gods, which are the works of men's hands. The work of men's hands. Go ahead. Gold and silver. To show at in. To show at in. Go ahead. And resemblance of beasts. Resemblance of beasts. The ones in the in the the fowls in the earth. Do you understand? On the earth and under the water underneath in the earth. Go ahead. Oh, a stone good for nothing. You see the carbon stone. The stone that is good for nothing. You understand that? The, the one that has the, the female what what on it. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, a stone good for nothing. Mm -hmm. The copper stone is a stone that is good for nothing. Read. The work of ancient hand. The work of an ancient hand. You understand? Those uh, those artists, who Michael D'Angelo. That's them, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Do Da Vinci. That's them. That is them. They were fashioning these things to make dumb idols. Okay? To entice and seduce simpletons among us. Yes, sir. So when you come for can when you come for cancer, imagine you come for cancer, but in your mind and in your day to day life, you have rejected the cancer. Meaning to hell with cancer, but I'm going for one. Look at the level of boldness, man, that men and women have up in here. You just so bold, you say to hell with cancer, but I'm going for one. How about that? They're not gonna find me out. I'm too clever for this. If you are too clever, we just ready to you are miserable. You are not clever. You are miserable. You are simple as hell. Sir. You understand? Dumb as a doorknob. Okay. Now, go back. Go back to Sirach 32 verse 18. Because I know some of you have forgotten already where we are. Let me remind you. Sirach 32 verse 18. Read that thing again. Them go with Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 18. Read. A man of counsel will be considered uh -huh. by a strength. By a what? By a strength. That's what we were going over. So all these precepts that we went over, we're dealing with the strange character of the man and the woman. We have not dealt with pride yet. But that strangeness entered into pride. You understand? So the first characteristic of the anatomy of sin is pride. You understand? Read that again. Verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 18. Read. A man of counsel mm -hmm. will be considered. They'll be considered. Come on. But a strange and proud man. But a strange and proud man. Go ahead, O woman. Is not daunted with fear. They are not daunted with fear. Let's deal with the pride business. You understand? Give me Sarah 10 and 12. Let's understand what is pride in the sight of the Mosai. 
How does the Most High God define pride? Let's read it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 12. Read. The beginning of pride. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. Is when one departs from the Most High. When you depart from the Most High, you depart from counsel. You depart, meaning to reject. You understand? You reject the counsel of the Most High God of heaven and earth. Read. And his heart is turned away from his maker. Meaning your mind. Your mind is turned away from your maker. But your, where is your mind at at this point? I agree your mind is turned away from your maker. So now, you have a new maker now. Satan, the devil. He is your maker. You understand? Go ahead. For pride is the beginning of sin. You see that pride is the beginning of sin. Which means what? Idolatry. Exactly. Idolatry. Read that thing again, because I know some of you missed it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For pride is the beginning of sin. Mm -hmm. And he that has it shall pour out abomination. Go ahead. And, and therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamity. He did what now? And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. He brought upon them strange calamities. Remember it says, a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Go ahead. And overthrew them utterly. That's where, look where we are now. The Lord overthrew us utterly. He took us from heaven into the earth in Lamentations 2 and 1. So if you still remember the beginning precepts, connect it. Now, you see that part when it says that the, the pride is the beginning of sin. So that means the sin, the beginning of sin was what? Pride, which is idolatry. Yes, that means the sin in the garden, what was it? Pride. Idolatry. You understand that? That's why it says, see, the what? It says the beginning of what? Pride is the beginning of sin. When did sin begin? In Genesis, the third chapter. Idolatry. You understand? Now, give me the book of Sirach 15 verse 1. Sirach 15 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 15, verse 1. Come on. He that feareth the Lord uh -huh. will do good. He will keep the commandments according to Romans 7 and 12. Write that down. Read. And he that has the knowledge of the law mm -hmm. shall obtain it. Shall obtain it. The hair is wisdom. This is what we're reading here. The precept for this is Psalms 111 and 10. Now jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. But foolish men shall not attain unto her. Foolish men will not attain unto wisdom that we read in verse 1. Read. But sinners shall not see it. Sinners shall not see it. Remember what we read in Revelation 3? It says you blind. You blind. He says sinners shall not see it. Read. For she, for she is far from pride. She is what now? For she is far from pride. Because wisdom is far, is far, is far from pride. So when you have a prideful spirit, wisdom is nowhere near you. You have no fellowship with wisdom in any wise. Don't care how you slice it. You have no fellowship with wisdom if you have the spirit of pride on you. Go ahead. For she is far from pride. Mm -hmm. And men that are liars cannot remember her. You see that thing? Men that are liars cannot remember her. Their hair is wisdom. They, you will have a forgetful spirit. When it's time for you to apply when you are faced with a challenge, you will not know which precept to pull to apply yourself. You'll only remember after you've done the deed. Then you remember. Wisdom is far from you. <laughs> it's far. Because when the challenge comes, that's when you remember it. But you only remember after you've done it. You committed the sin. Then you, you remember. Wisdom is far from you. That's what the Lord is saying, man. It's always a after the fact. Because you didn't remember. You remember it to forget. <laughs> See? Oxymoron. You always re you remember it to forget. You understand? It takes practice. So imagine, when you think you can do this on your own, you just the simpleton. We are up in here, and we're still struggling. When you are up out there, you think you can do this on your own. 
You have men that left this truth. No, guess what they are doing? They are still they are educating brothers out there with the Bible, but they have left the truth. How is that possible, man? That's a mind that's sick. That's a sick mind. Men leave this truth and say, "I'm taking a break. I'm out." And then when they're out there, they're still wearing fringes. They say, I'm in the truth. They are teaching. How does this happen, man? Because now that means we dumb up in here. We're coming together. We have to strive to enter in at the straight gate. But now they are out there. They are doing whatever they want. You understand? They are teaching other brothers about fornication, but they left for it. How about that, man? This is madness, man. They say, no, I'll come back when I'm married. So before you marry, that means you have to fornicate as much as you have to deal with so many deep ditches, man. Yes, sir. Until you decide, oh, this one is not a deep ditch, but the mouth is big. Big mouth, small ditch. <laughs> you understand? Big mouth, this, the ditch is small, but the mouth is big. It's the same thing. How about that? What's the difference? It's all the same. Now, the Negro is out there. He's teaching but he left. So when you teach somebody, when you left, you can't, not only that, but they are sending men up in here. Mm. They say, no, don't tell them it's me that sent you. Mm. Don't tell them it's me. That's obvious. We know who you are. But he said, don't tell them it's me that I sent you. He says, no, uh, the brother that sent me shall remain nameless. <laughs> you know, you understand that? They be mentioning things like fornication. A regular Negro in the world, they know the word. They don't even know what fornicate. They don't even know how to spell it. So you sending somebody to a place you left. That makes sense to you? That makes no damn sense, man. Because wisdom has left the building. Remember, before you came, you had no wisdom. You came up in here, you found wisdom here. When you leave here, don't think wisdom will leave. You will leave it here where you found it. You're not going to live with it. You will leave it here. Again, before you came, you had none. You get here, you get it, you get taught. Then you listen to wisdom to hell with you, I'm out. So wisdom going to be following you where you're going? No, you found it here. When you leave, you leave it here. Wisdom will be dwelling up in here. You leave. That goes for the rest of you. You leave, you leave it here. Don't think you'll be, you see, I'll be, still, I'll be pulling precepts. You'll be pulling precepts. Wisdom has left the building. You understand? Hey, let's get that in Zerag, man. I think it's in Zerag, right? 417, is it? Yeah, Zerag 417. Hey, what's the time, brothers? 1828, sir. 1828. Another 30 minutes. Now, read the Bible for me. Zerag 417. Chapter 4, verse 17. Read. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. Meaning wisdom will work with you in your crooked ways. It doesn't mean wisdom in crooked ways. There's no way. Wisdom will at the first. It says at the first. Wisdom will work with you by your crooked ways. Go ahead. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. Read. And bring fear and dread upon you. So wisdom will bring fear and dread upon you. The dread is the reverence that you must have for wisdom. Read. And torment him with a, with a discipline. You see what wisdom does? The job of wisdom is to torment you with discipline. Make you mad. You understand? That's the job of wisdom. The job of wisdom is to aggravate you. Yes, sir. You understand that? Is to make things personal. Because a lot of you, you come in here, you everything is fine until the, the counsel of the Lord enters into your personal life. Now all of a sudden you have a problem. It's only good when it's over there. The minute the wisdom of the Lord start entering into your personal life to start to mess it up, then you get mad. Now the Bible don't mean what it says anymore. That piece of don't mean that. That piece of don't mean that. Because your personal life, the Lord says, I'm going to invade your personal life. And you're not going to like it. And the reason why you don't like it is because you have idols in your spirit. You worship them. So now the Lord is coming to get rid of the idols. You're holding on to them. You don't want to let them go. Now all of a sudden, we, we, are, we, are, we are personal. Mm. 
You know, like in God, they're talking about me. How do they know? The Lord is in your spirit and in your house. He knows what's going on. So when we bring out the scriptures, you think, oh no, they must have said something. No, we said nothing. The Lord has said something. How about that? Shut the hell up and sit in some corner somewhere. If you don't believe this. Read it again. Verse 17. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastical, chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. For at the fact, she will walk with him by crooked way. Read. And bring fear and dread upon him. And bring fear and dread upon him. Come on. And torment him with a discipline. The Lord, the spirit of the Lord is, job is to torment you with her discipline. Read. Until she may trust his soul. Because the only way the spirit of the Lord may trust your soul, you must go through the torment. If you're not going willing to go through the pain of change, you understand that the wisdom of the Lord to search your soul, you, you're not built for this. Then why are you here? Why are you here? The spirit of the Lord must torment you so that the spirit of the Lord may trust your soul. If the spirit of the Lord, you, you, here you are, you, want, you, you pray for wisdom. But the Lord said, okay, you pray for wisdom, no problem. Go for counsel. How about that? You want wisdom, right? You want understanding? Right? I think that's what brothers be saying all these uh, marvelous prayers. You understand? I'm praying for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's like a rhyme. You'll be rhyming up in there. Then the Lord said, oh, when you're done, okay, go over there. There's the judge over there. Go over there and talk to him. You understand? The Lord said, don't worry. I'm going to answer him according to the multitude of their idols. You forget it. That you've got multiple idols in your spirit, you come for counsel. When we ask you questions, we think you we invade in your personal life. No. The Lord says there's idols up in there. Ask them. Question them. Torment them. Make sure that torment those idols up in their hearts. You forget him. When you come for counsel, it's not me answering you. Neither is it me asking, no, the Lord is the one. Because you've got idols in your let's get that. Hold that. Let me put the spirit out. You understand? Let me show those your spirit for a moment. Ezekiel 14. Read verse 1. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 1. Come on. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me, uh -huh. and said before me, Watch this. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Read. Son of man, mm. these men have set up their idols in their heart. They have set up their idols in their heart. You see what they've done? You know what, what it takes? It takes effort to set this up. Because you have to sit down and plan it out. What idol are you setting up in your spirit? Read. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. You see that thing? You, that, that idol is the stumbling block. And you put it be, before your face. Meaning what? You come there, you've got, you've got your game face on. You're coming for counsel. you got your game face on. It's like, yeah, I'm going to show them. You see? That's what you're telling us. You're telling yourself because the idol, you have seven on it. Be whispering in your ear because remember you're sitting on Satan's lap. Don't forget you forgot, Ben. Go ahead. Should I be inquired of, of, of should and I all be, by them? Should I be inquired of and all by them? Should I be inquired of these men that have set up idols in their heart? Go ahead. Therefore, speak unto them. Now the prophet will speak unto you. That's the law. Go ahead. And say unto them. Mm -hmm. That says the Lord God. That says the Lord God. Every man of the house of Israel. Every man of the house of Israel. Go ahead. That setteth up his idols in his heart. Read. And putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. Read. Before his face. Meaning what? You put your game face on. You see, the demon is in your face, Ben. The demon has covered your face. You come for counsel. You ever seen those people, brothers and sisters, come for counsel? The more scriptures come out, the more ugly they become. Because you don't think we don't see you. We see you. The more precepts you pull to correct the issue, the more ugly they get. More precepts, more ugly. You understand? Read. And come to the prophet. And they come to the prophet with those idols in their heart. They have game faces on. Read on. I, the Lord, will answer him. No, no, no. The prophet will answer them. I, the Lord. I, the Lord. I, the Lord, will do what? I, the Lord, will answer him. Mm -hmm. That come according to the multitude of his idols. You see what the Lord is saying, man? A lot, many of you, you don't believe this Bible. You don't believe it, man. When you come for counsel, the Lord says, I'm going to answer you according to the multitude of your idols. 
So by the time the council is done, you have hatred and resentment towards the prophet. But you get you actually married the Mosai. You married the Mosai. Go ahead. That I that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart mm -hmm. because they are all a strength. They are what now? They are all a strength. But a strange and a proud man is not daunted with fear. When he says estranged, the Lord says, I don't recognize you now. Read. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart. Go ahead. Because mm. they are all a strength from me through their idols. You see that thing when he says, but a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Even he of himself has done without counsel. You see this thing? This is what's happening up in here in soldiers of Christ in the congregation. Yes. Brothers and sisters come for counsel, but they hate the counselor. And the hate was coming out. The, you, you hate it because why? You think we we invading your personal life. No, the Lord is invading your personal life. The Lord is telling you right here, says, I, the Lord, will answer you by the multitude of your idols. So whatever is going up or going, going on up in your spirit, the Lord said, don't worry, I got this. Let them come in, ask them questions. You understand? Let them answer. You understand? The more you speaking, the Lord said, okay, this is what's going on. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. When you say some, when you speak now, begin to give the counsel. They're like, you see? You see? They hate my guts. That's what they say. They hate my guts. They don't love me anymore. Emotional, emotional damage. They be saying that. You understand? Now, you coming up with your feelings now. Now it's a feelings based. It's no longer biblical. It's feelings now. Now you have resentment. You just be resentful towards the leadership. You understand? You say, yeah, for two months, I'm not going to ask for cancer. There was a brother up in here who left. When he was told, well, listen, everything that you did in your life before you came into this truth was 100% wrong. You know, for three months, he didn't seek for cancer because he was just mad as hell. He was mad. He was angry. I'm offended. You understand? That three whole months, don't seek for cancer. Just be mad as hell. Just mad. You understand? Guess what? That demon is being recycled now. It's up in here again. It's back. You understand? Now, brothers and sisters, they are resentful. They have grudges. But every day, they wake up and pray and say, Father, forgive me. But you hate your brother who look like you. Every day. So, that's why, why do you think the prophets were put to death in the past? Why do you think that? <laughs> it's because people were this listen, this book is alive, man. I'm gonna show the Bible is a true book. It, there's a there's people, there Bible, there's a spirit in this book. This is not a true love magazine. No, no, no. This the spirit of the Lord is up in here. So now when you come for cancer, the Lord says, No, man, I hit where it hurts. And you think it's me. No, it's not me. It's the Lord. He's telling you what he's going to do when you come for cancer. Like a hammer. You understand? I give you your, your, your stubborn as a mule. You understand? You've, you're stiff-necked. You've hardened your neck, your heart and spirit and mind. The Lord said, don't worry. I got something for that. This Bible is like a hammer. It's going to break that idol that is in that head. And when the idol, idol is broken, you get mad. But you forget him. The Lord says, my word is like a hammer. You forget. <laughs> Remembering to forget. That's what you do be doing all day. You understand? Come for counsel. That's a command. Come for counsel, man. Come for counsel and deal with the demons. Deal with them demons, man. And have no grudges. Yes. Come for counsel. Get corrected. Get the understanding. And don't have no grudges. Just apply yourself. How about that? Utajiwaki. So when you are happy when you, you're walking around Umapuna Pun, you okay with that? Yes. That's what they say. Read that. Surah 417. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 verse 17. Go ahead. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. Read. 
and bring fear and dread upon him. Come on. And torment him with a discipline mm. until she may trust his soul. Until she may trust his soul. Come on. And try him by her laws. And try him by her laws. You see where the dread come from? You see where the torment come from? The torment comes from the laws of God. That's what torments you. Read. Then will she return the straight way unto him. Then she will return the straight way unto you. Go ahead. And comfort him. And do what now? And comfort him. You see, now when the wisdom of the Lord trusts your soul, it says now the Lord, the, 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 the wisdom of the Lord will return the straight way unto you. It's not the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is no longer gonna walk with you by your crooked ways. She'll return the straight way unto you. Go ahead. And show him her secret. That's why it says she will return the straight way unto you. And show you her secrets. Meaning the Lord will reveal things unto you now. Go ahead. But if he go wrong. If he says, I'm done. I'm taking a break. I'm out to hell with you niggas. What does the wisdom of the Lord do? She will forsake him. Listen. You will leave the wisdom. You found it here. You will leave it here. Then you, you re agree you reject the wisdom of the Lord. Hey, what's going on? You reject the wisdom of the Lord. The wisdom of the Lord will forsake you. Go ahead. And give him over to his own rule. You see that? The wisdom of the Lord will give you over to your own distractions. And your own distraction will come through your, the, those lusts that you wanted to fulfill. Because here we were holding you back. Agree when you were here, we were holding you back. From fulfilling those lusts that you really want to fulfill. So now when you go out there, you're going to indulge as much as you want. Don't nobody going to tell you nothing. Because at first you're going to still think, no, I'm still in the truth. But you're out there. I'm still in the truth. But you're dipping in many stuff. But you're still in the truth. You're sending people to the place you left. But you're still in the truth. That makes no sense to me, man. Because that's letting you know that's a sick mind. The mind is sick. Okay, now, Sarah chapter 7, 15, now verse 8. Sarah 15, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 8. Go ahead. For she is far from pride, mm. and men that are liars cannot remember her. You see that? And men that are liars cannot remember wisdom. Because it says she will forsake you and give you over to your own distraction. That's what we're reading here. Now, give me the book of Psalms. Give me Psalms 40, verse 4. Psalms 40, verse 4. Read that. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 4. Go ahead. Blessed is the man. That maketh the Lord his trust. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. Go ahead. And respecteth not the proud. And is the Lord does not respect the proud. Go ahead. Nor such as turn aside to lie. That's the same thing we read in Sarah 15 verse 8. Okay. Give me the book of Job 35 verse 10. Job 35 verse 10. I have a lot to cover. So I'm going to be rushing a little bit. Bear with me. Sarah 35. Uh, no, Job 35 and 10. Read then. The book of Job, chapter 35, verse 10. Go ahead. But none say, where is God my maker? Because remember, remember it says, then his heart is turned away from his maker. Remember what we read in Sarah 10 and 12? Read again, verse 10 there. The book of Job, chapter 35, verse 10. Watch this. But none say, but none say, where is God my maker? Because why? Your heart is turned away from your maker. Why would you ask that? Read. Who give us songs in the night. Go ahead. Who teaches us more than the beast of the earth. The Lord teaches us more than the beast of the earth. Go ahead. Who make us us wiser than the fowls of heaven. Watch this. There they cry, but none giveth answer. You see that? They cry, but none giveth answer. Read on. Because of the pride of evil men. That's it. They cry, but none giveth answer because of the pride of men. Why? You come for counsel, but you don't want to interact with the counselors. Guess what? You prideful. You don't come for counsel at all, period. You are ten your, your heart is turned away from your maker because you think you are too clever for this book. But we know, we read, what, it, what happens when you are too clever. You should have discovered this sooner then. Hmm? That means all the foolishness in your life 
it was just make believe nearly sony ne? hmm? i know some of them have, they didn't catch it sony make believe yes, sir. that's the sony slogan yes, mm -hmm. go ahead verse 13 surely god will not hear faith the lord says i'm not gonna hear you then when you cry unto me go ahead Neither will the Almighty regard you. The Lord is not going to regard your prayers when you cry unto him. Because why? You think you can do this on your own. You cannot come here and you don't seek counsel. Because what you are saying, you say, I can do this on my own. I don't need the Lord. That's what you are saying. Now watch this. Give me the book of uh, Proverbs 6 verse 16. Proverbs 6 verse 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 16. Come on. These things, things, these things, six things, doth the Lord hate. Uh -huh. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Go ahead. A proud look. A proud look. The Lord says he hates these things, man. He despises them. Read. A lying tongue. A lying tongue. Come on. Don't come for counsel and just be lying. The Lord says he hates these things. Go ahead. And hands that shed innocent blood. You see that thing? Hatred. Go ahead. And heart that devises wicked imagination. You come for counsel, but your heart has already devised wicked imaginations against the Lord. The Lord said, don't worry. Answer them according to the multitude of their idols. Read. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. You see that thing? He says, the feet that are swift to run to mischief. Go ahead. A false witness mm. that speaketh lies. Stop. You come for counsel, but you come in to bear false witness at the council. Read. And he that soweth discord among brethren. Exactly. Because guess what? You don't seek counsel, right? What do you think you're going to be doing? You're going to be sowing discord among brethren because you have no counsel. You have no counsel because if you had counsel, you'll know what to say. You'll know what to do. You'll know when to do what you're supposed to do and what to say when you're supposed to say and it will be what? According to the laws of God. It will be in the spirit. But it's not because you have no counsel. Like you, you are too clever for this. You're too clever. You're smart. Mm. You're witty. But it's too clever. What happened to the clever? What happened to them? You ever seen the clevers? Jagokazi, what happened to them? Where do they end up, the clever Jagokazi? What happens to them? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 15, verse 25. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 25. Watch this. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. You see what the Lord says? He says he will destroy the house of the proud. Your physical house and your spiritual one. Especially the spiritual house. Go ahead. But he will establish the border of the widow. But you see what? He will establish the border of the widow. The widow in this case talk about Israel. Okay, you can read about that in Baruch. Okay. Um, give me Proverbs 16 verse 5. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 5. Watch this. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying, man? He says, if you are proud in heart, you are an abomination unto him. Meaning what? You disgust him. So that means when you come for prayer, you are a stinking savor unto the Lord. You are not a sweet smelling savor. You are not. You understand? Go ahead. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Read. Your hand, join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. You see that? Because remember, when he says, though hand, join in hand, he's talking about the ones that come by themselves or couples come for counsel. The hand joining in that, these are couples now. Married couples coming for counsel. And being Safira and what? Ananias and Safira who came to tempt the Holy Ghost and be lying. Yes. Because I've counseled many couples in here that are married, and guess what? All of them, they were mirroring Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. They just come to lie at the table. Why have you conceived this in thy heart? And they died. You understand? They were put to death. Now keep reading. 
Jump down to verse 18. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 18. Come on. Pride goeth before destruction. Pride goeth before destruction. The Lord will destroy you, man, through your pride. Go ahead. Remember, it says, the house of the proud will be destroyed. Go ahead. And then haughty spirit before a fall. You are haughty, meaning you are proud. You understand? Apiri. That's what the, the Venex says. Apiri. Go ahead. Better. Better it is to be a humble spirit with the lowly mm -hmm. than to divide the spoil with the proud. We're not going to divide the spoil of the proud men in the kingdom. How about the spoil is the kingdom? So the proud must be up in the... No. The proud must not be in the kingdom of heaven, men. They are not eligible to enter in in the 12 gates. No. You understand? That's why we must repent. Malachi 4 and 1. Malachi 4 verse 1. Watch this. Malachi 4 and verse 1. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. For behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven. That shall what now? That shall burn as an oven. That shall burn as an oven. That day is the day of evil, the great day of the Lord. Go ahead. And all the proud. And all the what? And all the proud. And all the proud. Come on. Yea. Mm -hmm. And all that do wicked. Because that's the proud. Go ahead. Shall be stopped. Shall be what? Shall be stopped. You see what the fate of the proud is? Stubble. You're going to be ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Go ahead. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Shall burn them up. Go ahead. Say the Lord of say, hosts. Say the what now? Say the Lord of hosts. Read. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Meaning you are not going, it will be as if you are never existed. This is what the Lord is saying. So when you are dealing with the spirit of pride, you don't want to seek counsel. When, when you come for counsel, you're too smart for this. The, the Mosa is telling you of it. Because you can be clever. You can deceive me. But you're going to deceive the ancient of days? The one who has no beginning, no end? You're going to deceive that. Because remember, the Mosa God, time has, no, time has no play unto him. Time has no effect to the monster. He made one. And he existed before it. When he was there, he made time. This time which is a cage. The Lord made it. Man, you trying to... How do you mess up with somebody like that, man? How do you mess up with somebody like that? Mm. Go ahead and do it. First Timothy 6 verse 2. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 2. Mm, yes. First book of Timothy chapter 6 verse 2. Come on. Let as many no, say. No, no, no. 1 Timothy. What did you say? 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 2. Come on. And they that, that have believing masters. And they that have believing masters. You know what the God masters goes into leaders. Leaders that keep the commandments, read. Let them, let them not despise them. You see that? But some of you, you come in here, you hate the table. He says, let them not despise them. That's a commandment. Read. Because they are brethren. Because we are your brethren. Read. But rather do them service. Mm -hmm. Because they are faithful and beloved. Read. But take us of the benefit. Mm -hmm. These things teach and exhort. Because that's what we're doing on a day. We're teaching these things and we're exhorting you. Go ahead. Watch this. Keep reading. If any man teach otherwise. If, if anybody teach otherwise, meaning what? You mama, you complain. You don't want to see counsel. You're teaching otherwise. Because when you say I don't want counsel, you're teaching. You are teaching. When you don't seek of counsel, you are teaching also. Go ahead. If any man teach otherwise mm -hmm. and consent not to wholesome ways. Because they don't consent to wholesome words. The wholesome words is the counsel that you're going to receive from the word of God. That's the wholesome words. Read. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the, those wholesome words is the, is the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Read. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Mm, that doctrine is what? The keeping of the commandments of the Mosai. Go ahead. He is proud. He is what? He is proud. You see, that man or woman, they are proud. They are walking with the spirit of pride. Read. Knowing nothing. They, whoa, whoa. They what now? Knowing nothing. That's what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 13 verse 9. Because if they knew so much, they would have sooner discovered this. Go ahead. But doubting about questions mm -hmm. and strives of words. You see that thing? They are doubtful. They are doubt. They are asking dumb and foolish questions, man. Go ahead. Where of cometh envy? Where of cometh envy? Read. Strive. Strive. Raving. Mm -hmm. Evil. Surmising. Evil surmisings. Go ahead. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind. Go ahead. And destitute of, of the truth. The Lord, the laws of God is not in them. Go ahead. Supposing that gain is godliness. Mm -hmm. From such withdraw thyself. You see what the Lord is saying? We mustn't cancel you then. How about that? You just live every day. We don't cancel. The Lord says, From such tenor, withdraw thyself. That means you come for cancel, you don't want to be canceled. The Lord says we must withdraw ourselves from you. We're not going to cancel you. You just sit over there in a corner somewhere. You don't come for counsel. You stay, stay, don't see counsel. Stay over there. Because we know when you come for counsel, you don't like the counsel. And now you have to, you have to do the work of the counsel. You're going to hate and despise us. That's what you're going to do. You understand? First Peter 5 and 5. First Peter 5 verse 5. Read that. First book of Peter, chapter 5 verse 5. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye younger. Ye younger. Go ahead. Submit yourselves unto the elder. That's a commandment. That's not a suggestion, man. It's a commandment. Read. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Easy. It says all of you, meaning according to the order that the Lord has set up. Read. And be clothed with humility. And be clothed with humility. That's when you get put on a change of raiment. Read. For God resisted the proud. The Lord says, I'm resisting you. And how does he resist you? He allows Satan to come and resist you. Like we read in Zechariah 3. Satan standing at the right hand to do what? To resist him. Read. And give grace to the humble. The Lord says, I'm going to give grace to the humble. Meaning one, I'm going to extend grace and mercy to those that humble themselves to the laws of God. Meaning what? The Lord says, I'm going to keep giving you chances for you to get your mind right. Yes, you see what the Lord is saying here? Yes, now, watch this. Um, give me Sirach chapter 13, verse 20. I'm skipping things now. Sirach 13, verse 20. Chapter of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 13, verse 20. Go ahead. As the proud hate humility. The proud hate humility. So that means that brothers and sisters that are proud, they hate brothers and sisters that are trying their best to apply the laws of God. It's not if, it's not maybe, it's a fact. Understand it. Read. So does the rich abhor the poor. Exactly. Hatred. You understand? Now give me the book of, uh, give me Sirach 25 verse 2. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 2. Come on. Three sort of men my soul hated. Mm. And I am greatly offended at their life. Watch this. A poor man that is proud. A poor man that is proud. Imagine. The Lord says he hates this type of spirit. A poor man or woman that is proud. Go ahead. A rich man that is a liar. Read. And an old adulterer that doted, that doted in adultery. Now give me the book of... Um, Sirach 27, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 15. Come on. The strife of the proud is bloodshed. You see that? Because the proud, proud men and women, they cause strife, contention. Read. And their revelings. Their revilings. And their revilings are grievous to the ear. You see that thing? Your reviling is grievous to the ear. That's why we don't want to hear you. You understand? 
When brother such and such says I'm seeking for counsel, guess what? You are, they are reviling, they are going to be grievous to you here. Yeah. They just be draining you out. You understand? Sir. Now watch this. Give me, jump down to verse 28. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 27, verse 28. Come on. Mockery and reproach are from the proud. Mm. But vengeance as a lion shall lie in wait for them. You see what the Bible is saying? You come for counsel, but you don't apply. You don't come for counsel, but you are up in your Shalom, Moses and Christ bless. You mock him, but you are mocking the Mosai. You understand? Now watch this. Give me uh, Second Maccabees 9 and 1. This is Antiochus when the Lord plagued him with an incurable disease. Second Maccabees 9 and 1. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 9, verse 1. Watch this. About that time came Antiochus with dishonor. With what? With dishonor. With dishonor. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. Out of the country of Persia. Mm. For he had entered. This. Okay, that's it on there. The key is Antiochus. We're talking about Antiochus. Jump down to verse 7 now. Watch this. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. How beat he nothing at all feeds from his brain. So Antiochus had a big mouth. He was proud. He used that mouth to spew out prideful things. Go ahead. But still was filled with pride. He was filled with pride even after the Lord plagued him with the disease. Now imagine, you come into the congregation, you discover that the Lord has plagued you with some disease. Whatever illness, whatever ailment, it doesn't matter what it is. You understand? Guess what? Go ahead, verse 7, one more again. The book of Maccabees, chapter 9, verse 7. Read. How be he nothing at all ceased from his brain, mm. but still was filled with pride. Read. Breathing out fire in his rage against the Jews. Go ahead. And commanding, and commanding to haste the chariot. But it came to pass that he fell down from the chariot. Mm. Carried violently, mm. so that having a sore form. Remember, a chariot today is your car. Yes, sir. You forget him, Ben. A chariot today is your car, your jolopi. Right? Go ahead. All the members of his body were much pain. Mm. Go ahead. Watch this. And thus, and thus he that a little aforethought, he might command the waves of the sea. Because he thought he was a God on earth. That's why it says Antiochus Epiphanes. God's manifest on earth. Watch this. Read. So proud was he beyond the condition of man. Stop. Mm. You see how proud Antiochus was? They say he was so prideful beyond the conditions of men. Meaning the level of pride that he had, it was beyond that men can have. It was outside of the bounds of normalcy. You understand that? Read. And when the high mountains in a palace mm. was now cast on the ground and carried and horse litter showing forth unto all the manifest power of God. You see that? So the most High God, he destroyed him in his chariot. So, brothers and sisters, many of you, you've got chariots. Don't be playing up in here, man. You do, you have a chariot. Then I say, mm, this one is proud right here. This one is proud over there. The Lord said, don't worry. I'm going to meet you in your chariot. You see how the Lord operates, man? Don't be playing. Don't be playing up in here, man. Okay? Now, um, yes. Now, the anatomy, remember, we're dealing with the anatomy of sin. Some of the characteristics have already touched on them. It was pride, right? Yes, sir. It was idolatry. Yes, sir. Pride, idolatry, and what? Misery. You understand? So the next one is what? Shame. Shame. Because proud, proud pride enters in, idolatry enters in, there comes shame. Shame. Let's get into it. Give me Proverbs 11 verse 2. I'm going to show you. Pride leads to shame. That's just the logical things. That's how it works. That's the logical, that's the logical sequence, isn't it? So it's pride, then it's shame. Watch this. Proverbs 11 and 2. The book of Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2. Listen good. Come on. When pride cometh. Uh-huh. Then cometh shame. There it is. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Go ahead. 
But with the lowly is wisdom. But with the lowly, with the humble is wisdom. That's what he's talking about. Give me First Corinthians 15, verse 34. First Corinthians 15, verse 34. Watch this. That's book of Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 34. Go ahead. Awake to righteousness. You must wake up to righteousness. Go ahead. And sin not. And don't break God's laws. Read. For some have not the knowledge of God. For some have not the knowledge of God. Go ahead. I speak this to your shame. Because why? What brought about the shame? Pride. So the Apostle Paul was saying that because of pride, shame came into the congregation. And it was plaguing brothers and sisters. You understand? Give me Sirach 4, verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 21. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 21. Read verse 20. Start of verse 20. Let's start there. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 20. Come on. Observe the opportunity. Observe the opportunity. Come on. And beware of evil. Beware of your evil. Read. And be not ashamed when it concerns thy soul. But some of you are ashamed when it concerns your soul. Guess what? That shame is that sin that you are ashamed of is going to shame you. Next verse. Go ahead. For there is a shame that bringeth sin. You see that? There is a shame that will bring sin. Because that sin, I you are ashamed of it, is going to shame you. And the reason why you are so ashamed, so much so that you don't see cancer. Because you think when you are a unicorn, you think you are so special because you think you are the only one that's going through things. So therefore, you don't come for counsel because why? I'm so ashamed of this thing. I cannot bring it before the table because why? They, because remember, the, can, the table is a counsel. So that counsel is made up of a forum of judges. When you bring the matter, we go over scriptures, we discuss the matter so we can come up with a solution in the spirit of the Lord, the Lord guides us, and we diagnose the problem, we give the solution. So some of you, in fact, many of you, if not all, you don't like that. You don't. You don't like that. Because you come for counsel, we discuss the counsel. I will discuss with the brother that has been obviously raised up and whatnot, and I'm going to discuss it with them. I say, okay, let's go over scriptures. Let's diagnose the problem. Here's a solution that said the Lord. Many of you, you don't like that thing. Because, yeah, but they are discussing it. So what do you think we're going to do? We must use the scriptures to discuss the matter and come up with solutions here in the spirit of the Lord. So you, you, many of you, you hate that. That's why you don't come for content. It's because of that. Well, shame on you. Because he says, let us praise famous men, our fathers that beget us, leaders of the people by their counsels. So leaders have to sit down and go through counsel. You know what's really demonic about this? Because in Esau's plantation, Esau does the same thing. When it comes to, um, you know, you know, working month end reviews, Month end reviews. Iso don't sit by himself. Iso sits in a council. Ne? They make a decision. Okay, does these people get a bonus? Does that is the, we want to promote such and such? See, so is in see. They sit. I guess they be observing you. They see how you performing. They they do. They call performance reviews. They see their perform performance reviews. They see how you perform how you conduct yourself. And then they sit in boardrooms. They discuss it all, oh, but you know, in terms of this area, in terms of uh, you know, taking responsibility, taking accountability, they are responsible, they are accountable, they are reliable, and things of that nature. The other one discusses it, another one discusses it. Then they come to a conclusion. So now, when it comes to Israel, no, 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 don't do that. But in Israel's plantation is perfectly normal. But in Israel, no, don't do that. You simple as hell. Then why are you here for? Then you should leave Israel's plantation too then. How about that? But you're not going to leave it. You know why? You worship his money. That's why you're not going to leave Israel's plantation. But when you're here, you think you can leave the Lord because you worship your money anyway. Psalm 5 is 13. 
They are becoming ecclesiastics, chapter 5, verse 18. Watch this. Honor and shame is in talk. That's it. Honor and shame is in talk. Go ahead. And the tongue of man is his fault. And the tongue of man is his fault. Give me Exodus 32, verse 1. I'm going to show you the shame. Let me, let's get some examples. Give me Exodus 32 and 1. I'm going to show you something. Because remember, it's pride, it's shame, it's idolatry. You understand? We have already touched on idolatry, but it's coming full circle. Read that. Exodus 32 and 1. The book of Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. Watch this. And when the people saw Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, mm. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Watch this. And said unto him, mm -hmm. Up, make us gods, we shall go before us. You see what they say? Make us gods. We shall go before us. Remember now, they say Moses delayed. Yes, Where was Moses country? Because Moses, they could see him on the Mount Zion was on fire. Moses was up there. They're looking right at him, but they say, but he's delayed. What was, because it's different if they don't see him at all. Moses is over there. Yes, sir. But they say he's delaying to come down. You see that thing? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And when the people saw that Moses was delayed to come down out of the mount, mm. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron Read. and said unto him, Make up, make us gods, we shall go before us. We shall go before them. Read on. As for this Moses, because as for this Moses, go ahead, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. And they remember that, by the way, they don't forget. You see, they are remembering to forget. Watch this, go ahead. We want not what has become of him. Yeah, we don't recognize him. We don't know what has become of Moses. Hmm? He thinks he's better. Wait. That's Israel better. You understand? Go ahead. And Aaron said unto them, mm -hmm. Break off the golden ears, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Because, listen, they came to Aaron, because you know what this is? They, you know what this goes into? I'm going to tell you a secret. You see, when you bring it to today, ne, brothers will say, you know what, ne, I'd rather go and speak to Soldier Bezilel. I don't want to go to the leadership. Ne, mm -mm. I'd rather cancel, cancel with Soldier Bezilel because what? In their minds, he's going to do what Aaron just did here. You see, that's the mindset. He said, the Negro is demonic, man. They're going to say, mm -mm. no, 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 no. I'm not going to go to the leadership. I'm going to Soldier Bezilel instead. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to cancel with the brother. Because if I go to the leadership, we want not what has become of him. That's the spirit, man. Read it again. Verse 2. The book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 2. Read. And Aaron said unto them, Go ahead. Break off the golden ears, which are in the ears of your wife. Meaning what? He's going to enable us. You understand? Because if I go to the leadership, he just be hitting too much. He's like, he be clapping. No, no, I'm not going over there. Oh, I'm not seeking counsel at all, period. Go ahead. Of your sons and of your daughters, mm. and bring them unto me. Go ahead. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ear, Read. and brought them unto Aaron. Watch this. And he received them in their hand, and fashioned it with a graving stool. Mm. With a graving tool. Because now, remember, it's a graven image now. Go ahead. After he had made it a molten calf. A what now? A molten calf. Nahushta. Mm. You see, they even gave it a name, man. Go ahead. And they said, mm. This be thy God. And this they be, said, whoa, What did they say? And they said, This be thy God, O Israel. This be thy God, O Israel. Remember, in verse 1, they remembered that Moses delivered them out of Egypt at the hand of the Mosai. Go ahead. These be thy God, O Israel, uh -huh. which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Watch this. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Not only that, he even set up an altar for this thing. Read. And Aaron made proclamation, proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. You cannot make this stuff up. A feast to the Lord? They built an altar to the calf they, which they made. They say tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. <laughs> to the Lord. It's not to the Lord, man. Go ahead. And they rose up early on the morning mm. and offered burnt offerings. You see that? Isn't that what um, Nadab and Abayu that they did? Yes, they sir. offered strange incense. 
Go ahead and brought peace offering. You cannot make this up. Read. And the people sat down to eat mm -hmm. and to drink. And to what? And to drink. To drink. And rose up to play. You see, this playing right here, that's today is twerking. That's what this is talking about right here. This playing is not talking about, no, 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 no. This is those sexual dances they be doing. Jumping on top of cars, wearing the bum shorts, shaking their bums. That's what this is. You understand? Now jump down to verse 17. No, 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 no. I is gonna, I'm gonna be... Read verse 21. You know what? Read verse 19, man. The book of Exodus chapter 32 verse 19. Read. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp. Now this is Moses coming down because there was a noise. Now Moses has to come down to see what the hell is going on here. Read. That he saw the calf. He saw the calf. Mm -hmm. And the dent. And the what? And the dent. That's the play. The dancing does the play. Read. And Moses' anger waxed hot. Mm. And he cast the tables out of his hand. Remember, he was up there 40 days and 40 nights. He had the tables of testimony and tables of stones and laws. He took the two tables and he break them. Yes, sir. Read. And break them beneath mm. the mount. Uh -huh. And he took the cow which they had made. Go ahead. And burnt it in the fire. Go ahead. And ground it to powder. So he turned, he took the he took the calf, he ground it to powder. You understand? Watch this. And strode it upon the water mm -hmm. and made the children of Israel drink of it. Meaning he killed them. Yes, yeah, because what's gonna happen? I get you ground this golden calf into powder, then you must drink it. He made them drink it. So when it gets into the stomach, what happens? Because you're going to be pooping blood and peeing blood. That's what Moses did. He put them to death. They died. You understand? Read. And Moses said unto Aaron, mm. what, did, what did these people unto thee? That thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. Watch this. And Aaron said. And, and guess what? When the people they said, no, 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 we're not going to the leadership. This is what they are hoping for. They're thinking they are going to be enabled to do sin. Or no, the brother will miss something. You have no idea because there's always some counsel be going out. So when you talk to him, it's almost as though you are talking to me. But you think you are too clever for this. You too, you too, you too wise on this wise. You understand? Go ahead. And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord wet hot. Mm. Thou knowest that the people. You know how you, you see, you know the people, you know how they are. They be rebellious. Read. That they are set on mischief. They are set on mischief. Come on. But they said unto me, mm. make us gods. And he's right. That's what they said unto him. Go ahead. We shall go before us. Mm. As for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Mm. And I said unto them, whatsoever has whatsoever. Been Whosoever had any gold, whosoever had any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this cow. Shazam! It's like that's what just happened, man. It's like wait, they came to me. I put the golden cap together with the gold, and boom, they come this cap. Shazam! Aaron is making it seem like it was just magic that this happened. He made this thing. <laughs> you understand? Read on. And when Moses saw, saw that the people were naked. Remember now. When the Moses did what now? And when Moses saw that the people were naked. He saw that the people was naked. Go ahead. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame. Unto their what? Unto their shame. Unto their shame. Come on. Among their enemies. You see what happens when you don't see counsel? Shame, pride enters in. Then cometh shame. Then cometh nakedness. The same nakedness that we read in Revelation chapter 3. Yes, when Christ says you are miserable, blind, and naked. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Okay. Now, give me First Samuel 15, 23. That's book of Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Watch this. For rebellion 
is as the scene of witchcraft. The rebellion is the scene of witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness mm -hmm. is as iniquity and idolatry. You see that thing? So all this leads to idolatry. All roads lead to idolatry. All roads lead to idolatry. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He has also rejected thee, rejected thee from being king. You see what happens? This is what happens. All road leads to idolatry. Now, the next thing is dishonor. Is pride, shame, idolatry, dishonor. Your soul gonna get dishonor, man. Now, give me Psalms 35, 26. The book of Psalms, chapter 35, verse 26. Watch this. Pay close attention. Go ahead. Remember, it's pride, it's shame, right? Yes, sir. Idolatry, dishonor. Watch this. Read it. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together. Let them be ashamed. That's that shame again. Go ahead. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice in my head. Read let them be clothed with shame and dishonor. Let them be what now? Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor. You're going to be clothed with shame and dishonor. That's the next thing. Dishonor. Go ahead. That magnify themselves against me. You see that thing? Now give me Psalm 69 verse 19. Psalm 69 verse 19. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 69 verse 19. Go ahead. Thou hast not, thou hast known my reproach. Come on. And my shame. And my what? And my shame. And my shame. And my dishonor. And my what? And my dishonor. You see that? Shame follows what? What follows shame? Dishonor. Go ahead. My adversaries mm -hmm. are all before thee. Give me Romans 1 verse 3. Romans 1 verse 23. Romans 1 23. Let's get there. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 23. Go ahead. And change the glory of the, for, of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. Read. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Go ahead. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart. Remember, verse 23 is idolatry. Verse 23 goes into idolatry which leads to what? Uncleanness, go ahead. To dishonor their own bodies mm -hmm. between themselves. To do what now? To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You see where the dishonor happens? The dishonor happens unto your own body. It says to bring what? To bring, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Give me Sarah 1 verse 30. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 8. Go ahead. Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall. Don't exalt yourself, lest you fall. Go ahead. And bring dishonor upon thy soul. Because you're going to bring dishonor upon your soul. Because why? You remember, you're covered with shame. Read. And so God discover thy secret mm. and cast thee down into the midst of the congregation. Read. Because thou camest not, camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord. But thy, by thy heart is full of deceit. But your heart is full of deceit. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Um, give me the book of John, chapter 8. Sarah 22, verse 3 first. Sarah 22, verse 3. I'm almost done. Sarah 22 and verse 3. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 3. Read. Right. An evil natured son mm. is the dishonor of his father. That has begat him. Use that begetting. You see, when you don't obey, the, when you don't observe the fifth commandment, this is what happens. It brings dishonor upon your soul. Go ahead. And a foolish daughter is born to his loss. That's the same thing. Now watch this. Uh, give me John 8, 47. John 8, verse 47. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 47. Come on. Ye that is of God, mm. ye that is God's way. Read. Ye therefore hear them not, because they are not of God. Because you are not of God. Because guess what? 
When you hear God's word, you are of God. But when you reject God's word, you are not of God. So when you can remember, remember what was the first domino. Lack of counsel. That was the first domino. Right? Lack of counsel was the first domino in this. Okay? Jump up to verse 43. Verse 43. Mm -hmm. Why do you not understand my speech? Why can't you understand what Christ is saying? Read. Right? Even because he cannot hear my way. Because you are what? You are deaf. You are, spiritual, you are spiritually deaf, dumb, and blind. And naked. Okay? Jump down. Read verse 44. Go ahead. Ye are, with, ye are of your father the devil. That's why you cannot understand the things that Christ was saying. Because you are of your father the devil. Read. And the last of your father he will do. Last. Plural. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. Come on. And abode not in the truth, mm. because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. You see that thing? Verse 48 now. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, mm -hmm. Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast, and hast a devil? Do you see the same Christ and the devil on him? Read on. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, mm. but I honor my father. Watch this. And he do dishonor me. But he do dishonor me. They were dishonoring Christ, but he honored his father. You see that thing? So they were dishonoring a man that honors his father, which is in heaven. Get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, give me Luke 6, verse 46. Luke 6, 46. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46. Watch this. And why they call you me? Why call you me? And Come on. why call you me? Read. Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. and do not the things which I say. You see that? You say, Lord, Lord, but you don't want to do the things that are written in the book. You hate them. They are grievous unto you. You don't even try. Go ahead. Whosoever cometh to me mm -hmm. and heareth my saying, Watch this. And doeth them. And doeth them. I will show you to whom he is like. Watch this. He is like a man which built a house mm -hmm. and dig deep. Read. And lay the foundation on a rock. Because he's the rock. Come on. And when the flood arose mm. and the stream beat vehemently upon the house mm. and could not shake it mm -hmm. for it was founded upon a rock you see what happens when you are founded on christ man he says you are not going to be shaken you're not going to say i'm taking a break you are not founded on christ because i know you look why do i keep saying this because it's written in the book for three years the apostle paul was bringing this up for the next three years if you love <laughs> you understand I'm going to be keep bringing this up. Yes, Lord's will. Go ahead. Verse 49. Watch this. But he that heareth mm. and doeth not. But he that heareth and doeth not. Come on. Is like a man. That is like a man that without a foundation. Built a house upon the earth. Watch this. Against which the stream did beat vehemently. Mm -hmm. And immediately it fell. Watch this. And the root of that house was great. You see what happens when you reject counsel? The, he said, that's why it says what? And he says, if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him up to his own ruin. That's what he read. Watch this. Give me 2 Timothy 2 verse 20. I'm almost done. 2 Timothy 2 verse 20. Okay, come on. You got it? Yes, sir. Read. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 20. Come on. But in a great house, mm. there are not only vessels of gold. So the great house is the house of Israel. Write the precept down. Matthew 15, 24. Go ahead. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold mm -hmm. and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, mm. and some to honor mm -hmm. and some to dishonor. Some to what now? And some to dishonor. And some to dishonor. Watch this. Proverbs 15 verse 12. Proverbs 
Because that, that dishonor is going to bring what? It's going to bring self-hatred. Yes, Again, it's pride. Pride brings shame. Shame brings dishonor. Dishonor brings self-hatred, self-loathing. Now you hate yourself. How are you going to love your neighbor as yourself? You hate yourself. How are you going to love your neighbor as yourself? You're going to hate your neighbor as yourself. Proverbs 15. Read verse 12. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 12. Watch this. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. You see that thing? A scorner hates. That means the scorner hates the one that reproves them. Meaning they hate the, those that give correction. They, give, they hate those that give counsel. They despise them. Read. Neither will he go unto the wise. Neither, he's not going to go unto the wise. Because the wise is the one that will correct you. You understand? Now give me Proverbs 1. Verse 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 22. Come on. How long, ye simple ones, mm. will they love simplicity? Read. And the scholars delight in their scorn. Read. And fools hate knowledge. You see that? And fools, they hate knowledge. Proverbs 9, verse 8. The book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 8. Watch this. Reprove, not a scorn. Remember, the scorners, they delight in their scornings, and fools hate knowledge. Watch this. Lest he hate. Lest he what? Lest he hate. Him. Because they hate you. Why? Because they hate themselves. Go ahead. Rebuke a wise man, mm -hmm. and he will love you. You see that? When you rebuke somebody that is wise, they will love you for it. But when you rebuke somebody that hates correction, they will hate your guts for it. Sir. You understand that? Now, give me the book of Proverbs 8.36. The book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36. Read. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. But he that sinneth against the Lord, they wrong their own soul. Go ahead. All they that hate me love death. Meaning the Lord says you love death. You love death, the Lord is saying. Give me 2 Timothy 2, verse 21. Go back there. 2 Timothy 2, verse 21. Because remember, if we're dealing with dishonor, dishonor brings what? Self-hatred. Okay, watch this. 2 Timothy 2, verse 21 now. 2 book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. If a man therefore purge himself from these. If the man therefore purge himself, himself from these. Who are the these? The dishonorable one. Go ahead. He shall be a vessel unto honor. Mm -hmm. Sanctified and meet for the master's use. Watch this. And prepared unto every good way. Read. Flee also youthful lust, uh -huh. but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Read. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, mm -hmm. knowing, knowing that they do gender strife. Come on. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Read. But be gentle unto all men. Mm -hmm. Apt to teach. Meaning have the aptitude to teach the nation. Go ahead. Patient. Watch this. In meekness. In meekness. Instructing those. Instructing those that oppose themselves. Instructing those that hate themselves. You see what happens when we teach? Yes, sir. We're teaching our people. The state of the nation is that our people hate themselves. So how are they going to apply the royal law when they hate themselves? They hate you correcting them. And they hate themselves for being corrected. And they're going to hate their neighbor as themselves. Read again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 25. Go ahead. In meekness, mm -hmm. instructing those that oppose themselves. They oppose themselves, meaning they hate themselves. Read. If God, their adventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So, meaning, Lord willing, you will what? The Lord will give you what? Will give you repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. But in order for the Lord to give you the spirit to repent, you must acknowledge the truth. But if you hate it, guess what? The Lord is not going to give you the spirit to repent. You will die in that sin. Read. And that they may recover themselves. They, that's why it says may. Not will. May. Hopefully you will recover yourself. Go ahead. Out of the snare of the devil. Because now you are in the clutches of Satan. So now we're trying to recover you from the snare of the devil. And you hate us for it. Read. 
who are taken captive by him at his will. You see that? No, now Satan has taken you captive at his will. You dance into his tune now. You understand? So if you want to change all that, guess what you must do? Now give me Zechariah 3 verse 1. Let's go back now. Full circle. Zechariah 3. Not one. Zechariah 3 verse 4. Let's read that. Yes, sir. The book of Zechariah. Start verse 3. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 3. Watch this. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments mm -hmm. and stood before the angel. He said, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Remember I showed you, Joshua represents the 12 tribes of Israel. Joshua, oh hear now, oh Joshua, the high priest. He shall be what? Kings and priests unto God. So Joshua represents the 12 tribes. Okay, come on. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, mm -hmm. Take away the filthy garments from him. Watch this. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. Mm -hmm. I will clothe thee with change of raiment. I will do what? I will clothe thee with change of raiment. I'm going to clothe you with change of raiment. Hold this. Psalms 132 verse 9. It says, I'm going to clothe you with a change of raiment. What is this change of raiment what he's talking about? Psalms 132 verse 9. We're coming back here. The book of Psalms chapter 132 verse 9. Go ahead. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. Let thy priest be what now? Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. You see what the clothing is? When it says let them be clothed with a change of raiment, it's talking about righteousness. The laws of God. Go ahead. And let thy saints shout for joy. Because now we are clothed. We have a, new, we have a change of garment upon us. Now go back Zechariah 3 verse 4 again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 4. Go ahead. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, mm. Read. Take away the filthy garments from him. Read. And unto him he said, Behold, I have cast, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. He says, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. That is the change of raiment now. Go ahead. I will clothe thee with, the, with change of raiment. Read. And I said, let them set a fair metry upon his head. He says, let him set, set a fair metry upon his head. Read. So they set a fair metry upon his head mm -hmm. and clothed him with garments. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Give me Exodus 28 verse 2. Watch this. Watch this. Read it. The book of Exodus chapter 28 verse 2. Read. And thou shalt make and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother. Mm -hmm. For glory and for beauty. For what now? For glory and for beauty. For glory and for beauty. Go ahead. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted. Read. Whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Come on. And they and they make and they may make Aaron Aaron's garments to consecrate him. Uh -huh. And then, and they may minister unto me in the priest's office. That he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Come on, verse 4. That he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Mm -hmm. And these are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate. A what? A breastplate. He says, and these are the garments which they shall make. Go ahead. A breastplate. Mm -hmm. And an ephod. An ephod. And a robe. A what? And a robe. Read. And a broidered coat. Read. And a meat. A meat. A what? And a meat, a meat, come on, and a candle, mm. and they shall make, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, read, and his son, mm -hmm. that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, verse 36, same chapter, the book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 36, read, and thou shalt, and thou shalt make a plate of pure gold, mm. and engrave upon it. Like the engravings of a sickness. Mm -hmm. Holiness to the Lord. That's what it must be written. That was must be written upon it. Holiness to the Lord. Come on. And thou shalt put it on a blue on a blue lace. Mm. That it may that it may be upon the mitri. Upon the forefront of the mitri it shall be. Read. And it shall be. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead. 
that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy thing, Read. which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their holy gifts. Come on. And it shall be always upon his forehead, mm. that he may be that they that they may be accepted before the Lord. Read. And thou shalt him and thou shalt thou shalt shall embroider the coat of fine linen. And thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen. Read. And, and thou shalt make the mitri of fine linen. Mm. And thou shalt make the kettle of needlework. And thou shalt make the girdle of needlework. Now give me Exodus 28 verse 5. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 28 verse 5. Mm -hmm. And they shall take the gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. Read that again verse 5. The book of Exodus chapter 28 verse 5. Don't forget now what we read in the book of Zacharias. With the change of raiment. You understand? And the meat. I'm giving you the history why the Lord is using that history to give you the sense of the spiritual understanding of what this means. Go ahead. The book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 5. Come on. And they shall take the gold mm. and blue mm. and purple and scarlet and fine linen. And what? And fine linen. And what? And fine linen. And what? And fine linen. Give me Revelation 19, verse 8. Revelation 19, verse 8. Pay close attention, man. Come on. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 8. Come on. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. She should be arrayed in fine linen. That's talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Clean and white. Clean and white. For the fine linen mm. is the righteousness of saints. Read it again, read it again. And the what now? For the fine linen. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. You see why the garment was written and given in great detail? This is the spiritual understanding of it. Read it again, read it again, man. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 8. Come on. And to her mm. was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, uh. clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now go back to Zacharias now. Zacharias 3. Yes, sir. Uh, read verse 4 again. Yes, sir. The book of Zacharias, chapter 3, verse 4. Read. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Mm -hmm. And unto him he said, Read. Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. Come on. And I will close thee with, with change of raiment. You see that fine linen which represents the righteousness of saints. Read. And I said, and I said, let them set a fair mitri upon his head. Mm. So they set a fair mitri upon his head and clothed him with garments. And did what? And clothed him with garments. And clothed him with garments. Come on. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Read. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, mm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou wilt walk in my way. You see that thing? So this change of raiment is symbolic to what? The righteousness of saints, meaning what? You must now walk according to what thus saith the Lord. Read. And if thou wilt, wilt keep my charge, mm -hmm. then thou shalt also charge my house. You shall what now? And thou shalt also judge my house. Meaning what? Joshua will be one of the judges. That's what is laid in the regeneration. You, thou, you also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's Matthew 19, 28, somewhere there. Write it down. Go ahead. And shall also keep my cup. Mm. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. You see that thing? That's what the Lord is saying, man. That's what the Lord is saying. Give me Sirach 49 and 1. Sirach 49 verse 1. Because remember, we dress up, with, we give, are given a change of raiment. Not only that, but because you got to smell good, man. Yes, sir. There's no way you're dressing bad, you look bad to the bone, but you don't, you smell like my feeble shed. Mm -mm. You must smell glorious. Okay, now read that. Sirach 49 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 49 verse 1. Actually, you know what? Give me Exodus 30 verse 34. Exodus 30 verse 34, then I'm going to end it with uh, Zerach 49. Watch this. Exodus 30 verse 34. Yes, Read sir. them. Mm. Pay close attention. The book of Exodus chapter 30 verse 34. Watch this. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Take unto thee sweet spices. Sweet spices, sweet spices. Come on. Stecti. Mm, Stecti. Go ahead. And ponica. Mm. And galbana. Galbana. Go ahead. These sweet spices with pure frankincense. Mm. Of each shall they be a light weight. Meaning must, they must be the same weight. The same weight measured. Go ahead. And thou shalt make it a perfume. You shall make it a perfume. Go ahead. A confection. Mm. After the art of the apothecary. Of the apothecary. That's not a regular ducky word, you see. Read again, man. Come on, come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 35. Read. And thou shalt make it a perfume. Mm. A confection. After the art of the apothecary. Read. Temper together. Meaning mingle together. Go ahead. Pure and holy. Mm. And and thou shalt beat some of it very small. Read. And put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation. Come on, come on. When I will meet with thee, it shall be unto you most holy. It shall be unto you most holy. Keep reading. Watch this. Come on. As for the perfume mm. which thou shalt make, mm. ye shall not make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. Come on, come on. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. It shall be the, unto thee holy for the Lord. Because remember, when the Mosai shows up, this is the type of smell he wants to smell. So there must be a sweet smelling savor from the tabernacle of the congregation. The tabernacle of the congregation is no longer here. So what is the tabernacle of the congregation? Us, our bodies, man. Read. Whoso shall make, whoso shall make whosoever, like, whosoever shall make like unto that mm -hmm. to smell there too. Go ahead. Shall even be cut off from his people. That was a command. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 49 and 1. Sirach 49 and 1, watch this. When he says, whosoever, he's talking about people outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember, this was a command to the priests, right? Yes, sir. But remember now in Exodus 19 verse 6, ye shall be unto me a what? A kingdom of kings and priests. Now read that. Sirach 49 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 49 verse 1. Watch this, come on. The remembrance of Josiah. Watch this. Is like the composition of the perfume. Mm. That is, that is, that is made by the art of the apothecary. That's what we just read, man. That's what we just read. Read again, read again. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 49, verse 1. Read. The remembrance of Josiah mm. is like the composition of the perfume that is made by the art of the apothecary. That's what we read in Exodus 30, verse 34. Come on. It is sweet mm. as honey. Because what? We use sweet spices to make this perfume. Go ahead. It is sweet as honey mm. in, all, in all mouth. Read. And as music at a banquet of wine. At a banquet of wine. Watch this. He behaved himself uprightly in the conversion of the people. So now he's showing you the similitude of now that you smell like that, you become a sweet smelling savor unto the Lord. That sweet smelling savor translates into how you conduct yourself. Read. And took away the abomination of iniquity. Watch this. He directed his heart unto the Lord. Mm. And in the time of the ungodly, he established the worship of God. Because when you read about the history of King Josiah, King Josiah was a righteous king, man. King Josiah, even during the time of King Josiah, you read about, um, you know, when we were observing the Passover. Yes, they say it was glorious to be. Let's get it. Second Esdras 1. I'm almost done, man. No, first Esdras 1. First Esdras chapter 1, man. First Esdras 1. Verse 1. Watch this. I'm just going to touch on this. Come on. First book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. And Josiah held the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem unto the Lord. Unto his Lord. Unto his Lord. Read. And offered the Passover the fourteenth day of the first month. Go ahead. Having said the priests according to their daily course. You see, Josiah's men returned honor back to the twelve tribes of Israel. Read. Being arrayed in long garments. Mm. In the temple of the Lord. Watch this. And he spake unto the Levites, mm. the holy ministers of Israel. Watch this. That they should be hallowed. Mm. That they should hallow themselves unto the Lord. To set the holy ark of the Lord in the house. Mm. That that king sought that the king Solomon, the son of David, had built. Watch this. Go ahead. And said, Ye shall no more bear the ark upon your shoulders. Mm. Now therefore, serve the Lord your God. And minister unto the people of Israel. Watch this. And prepare you after your families and kindred. Mm. According as David the king of Israel prescribed. And according to the and according to the magnificence of Solomon his son. Mm. 
and standing in the temple according to the several dignity of the families. The several what now? The several dignity of the families of you, the Levites. Remember, he says, the several dignity of you, the Levites. We royalty men. Go ahead. Who minister in the presence of your brethren, the children of Israel. Now jump down to verse 21. Watch this. Verse 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Yea, all the kings of Israel had not such a Passover as Josiah. You see that? Josiah went all out, man. When the kingdom was being rebuilt, when the temple was being rebuilt, Josiah took his own money to help rebuild. You understand that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And the priest and the Levites mm. and the Jews mm. held with all Israel that were found dwelling in Jerusalem. Go ahead. In the 18th year of, of the reign of Josiah, was the Passover camp. Watch this. And the words of Josiah. The of works, the works. And the works of Josiah mm. were upright before the Lord mm. with an heart full of goodliness. Full of good, full of good, full of what? Full of godliness. Full of godliness. Go ahead. As for the things that came to pass in his time, they were written in former times concerning those that sinned mm -hmm. and did wickedly against the Lord above all people and kingdoms mm -hmm. and how they grieved him exceedingly. So that the, the words of the Lord rose up against Israel. You see that? That was Josiah's man. Our forefather, King Josiah. They compared his conduct, his humility to the laws of God, to the special perfume that was made by the art of the apothecary that was to be put in the holies of all when the Lord showed up on the scene, when the cloud came down. When all Israel beheld from their tents, we would see the Lord come down in the holies of all. He says, Josiah was like that. When the Lord showed up, give me that in Exodus 40, man. Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. Exodus 40, verse 34. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. Come on. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. That's when the Lord will show up on the scene. Read. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Because the cloud abode their own. The cloud meaning the Mosai came, the Lord came down with the chariot. Read. And the glory of meaning the Lord. Meaning this was, listen man, this was the things like Battlestar Galactica man. That's what, listen man, this was, um, what's the word, what's the word? It was, it was extraterrestrial. It was an extraterrestrial event when the Lord showed up on the sea and all Israel beheld this thing. It was glorious, man. We saw this thing with our eyes. You understand that? Yeah. The thing that the nations are trying to figure out. Listen, the greatest people on earth, we've seen all that stuff. Yeah. Why do you think the white man is so obsessed with the heavens? Because he's trying to be like us. Our forefathers are up there, man. Our ancestors, they are up there in the heavens, man. You understand that? Our lineage goes up to the heavens. Now read that thing again. The book of Exodus chapter 40 verse 35. Read. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Read. Because the cloud abode there on. Uh -huh. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Watch this. And when the cloud was taken The up, glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Come on. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle. The children of Israel went onward in all their journey. You see that thing? So now, when, listen, now when you smell like the art of the apothecary, the glory of the Lord fills your temple. Mm -hmm. You see how this goes? Yes, the glory of the Lord fills your temple. Mm. Go ahead. But, come on, come on. But if the cloud were not taken up, mm -hmm. then they journeyed not. Till the day that it was taken up. Watch this. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day. Mm. And fire was on it by night. But guess what? Right now, there's a pillar of fire by night. Right now over us. Because I know some of you don't believe it. Some of you don't believe that thing, man. You don't believe it. Listen, there's a fire of cloud. There's a pillar of fire out there. Up there. Yes, sir. During the day, when we're out, when we're here, when we go to war, there's a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night with us. Yes, Keep going. 
in the sight of all the house of Israel mm -hmm. throughout all their journey throughout all their what throughout all their journey even in the lands of their captivity how about that exactly. even in the lands of their captivities man so with that I'm gonna end the class right there oh pray let's give the Lord a hand yeah, I'm gonna end the class right there.